Off the, the bench, bench with Esther and T-Buff. Hey, T, they said I got to come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Esther and T-Buff. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. T-Bob, Mario, Danny, and Jake hanging out with you today. Uh, so, wait, I, I wasn't paying attention during the intro just now, Mario. Did you mention Theo? Uh, I did not. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. So, we're going to have Theo Vaughn on, but he just texted Jake. He's pushing tomorrow. So, we will, we will talk to Theo tomorrow. We'll still have Nick Underhill on at 9 a.m. today. And um, Coach Mulkey coming up at 8.30. And, of course, mailbag and everything else uh, that we always do on Tuesday. Hope you're having a wonderful morning. Uh, look, Jake, we're kind of like twins today a little bit. Black right. track suits? You, have, uh, you, don't have sweat, you don't have black sweatpants uh, on? No, nah, uh, I went uh, like every other day of my life I do, but I went khaki today. Khaki joggers. Is it the Fabletics logo right there? It is. Oh, okay, right on, dude. Yeah. Um, welcome into today. Uh, going to be a fun show. Uh, Brandon was going to play tonight. At least that's what we're trying to put out in the uh, in the universe. Um, hopefully, Bi going to return, maybe be the savior, uh, kind of like he was last season's for this New Orleans Pelicans team. We we'll get to all of your all the latest football uh, news as well, college, NFL, um, the the uh, the Cowboys' news cycle continues to churn, which has been very. I mean, still, it's kind of insane. That's it's all. Uh, that 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 people are talking about. Uh, what I'm talking about, Jake, is um, I think I think look, I think that in life, I think self awareness is important, and um, I think that today I'm feeling a little beat up. I got a right arm that doesn't really want to lift. My shoulders, it's not in a good spot. It's all a function of, uh, I guess, in hindsight, what can only be described as some sort of lightning snap midlife crisis. As uh, last night, a series of events um, the other night led me to purchasing a skateboard after uh, having a few drinks online. And um, last night, I suddenly found myself skateboarding around the neighborhood listening to the Garden State soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> listening to the Garden State soundtrack at night, <laughs> trying to recapture some modicum of my uh, youth, I suppose. <laughs> Get away from these kids. I'm hitting the streets, wife. Okay, I'm going to go tear it up. I'm going to skate. And, uh, and it was very fun, but I fell a lot. <laughs> a lot, including at the very end, I mean, a full-on head over heels, hit the shoulder, full somersault roll. And when I tell you, you know, in, uh, you're, you know, in Sin City, when uh, Bruce Willis is all, like, hurt at the end, and the yeah. guy's like, you can't even lift that can in your can. That's how my right arm feels right now. If you were to hand me, like, a big gun, I don't know that I could get it all the way up. I'm struggling up with this coffee right here. But uh, So was this in Monroe that y'all were hanging around, maybe, talking about some different things where you bought the skateboard? Kind of set no. the scene for us. No, it was when I got back the other day. Uh, my, my, my sister's uh, girlfriend's a professional skater, and so they were with my daughters, and they took me to the skate park, and my little daughters were, like, running around on their, um, on their scooters and mm-hmm. everything, and they absolutely loved it. So I was like, what, dude? I, I mean, I loved skating growing yeah, up. Used like, I used shred. to shred. I used to go to the skate park for hours and hours and hours. Now, as I've said many times on air, I've never showed so little improvement at anything that I've invested so much time into. I mean, I used to go like, you know, six hours every Friday immediately after school till close. Never really learned how to do anything beyond just ride the ramps. But, um, yeah, so I was like, oh, whatever, I'll buy a skateboard. And then uh, I went online. I found a skateboard for like, 300 pound dudes um, that should be pretty uh, pretty durable. I thought you meant like 300 pounds, like the currency. No, 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 no. It was, like, like, it, was, it was like 50 bucks. 
Ooh, snaps um, snapping, boy. No, no, it was like 50 bucks. It wasn't bad at all, actually. And, I, and I, But now I'm like, okay, is that... No, I, I haven't looked at the skateboard market. I'm like, is that the normal price? Or is this like... Because from my memory being a kid, and that is one of the other nice things about this, Jake, when I was skating, we're talking like sixth grade, right? I had yeah. no money of my own. So everything I needed to buy, everything I wanted to buy for the skateboard, I had to, you know... Beg, cheat, for a little steal, bit, maybe, huh? yeah, figure out some way of... Uh, I didn't think beg, cheat, and steal. I thought maybe like <laughs> some chores, maybe mowed some lawns. I mean, the, the one and the same. One and the same, really, right? Um, but yeah, I just remember everything being very expensive. So there was definitely a moment of uh, power when I purchased a skateboard on a whim the other day because huh, now I can. Look at that, dude. Just no questions asked. And um, yeah, sure Until enough. Until he got I, to the door and... Caitlin's like, what the hell is this? When hit those streets last night, and uh, it was fun. I will say I was very embarrassed, though. Anytime I came across another human being, I kind of tried to, like, hide my face or hide myself. I didn't want anybody to really see me. And um, I can only imagine what it actually looked like. To me, I felt like a big wave surfer. I was, like, skating in the middle of the street, and then I would, like, kind of ollie up the little driveway lip and then go back down. And I mean, to me, it felt like I was riding like crazy waves, just mm -hmm. absolutely shredding out there. And I'm sure um, I looked like what I am, um, which is an, you know, overweight, soon to be 34 year old stepping on a skateboard for the first time in quite literally 20 years. Um, fellas, how long does the skateboard? I don't want to say, you know, fat. Yeah, it's like, no, you, no, I, I, look, like, I, like I you're coming back with it. I live my Resurrection. Truth. Skateboard resurrection, I guess, I is what truth. we can call it. How long does it last? I'll give it till like the end of the summer. I think T-Bob can wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Danny, who knows him far better. Uh, how long is that going to Yeah, last? we were talking about this yesterday. I give it less than a month. Okay. Mm. I Okay, so I will say this. This is one of the few times where it's not just what my brain's going to be into. There may be an actual physical limitation to this because <laughs> even though I did like a like a 20 minute stretch afterwards, again, my body feels actually I feel a little bit better than I thought, except for the shoulder. And I knew when I hit the shoulder, that's when I packed it in. It was right by the house, and that's when I uh, kind of shamefully skated my way back. As, How long uh, did you sit on the ground and kind of like collect your thoughts? Like no sit on the ground, can't okay. be seen. Okay. Can't be seen. Got to get back up. Can't be seen. Um, it was already embarrassing enough falling. There's like maybe a car driving by. Mm. Bob's uh, for sure. And so I, I had to get up. I had to get up and uh, abandon the scene immediately. But yeah, golly, dude, shoulder is a uh, little, 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 little shot today. But at the same time, now, like you know, I get a couple more of these night sessions in. Then when I do go to the skate park with my kids, I've at least got most of the embarrassing stuff out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you can look, like, comfortable on the board, then you're winning half the battle. And the difference from the beginning of, like, the 45 minutes or whatever it was last night to the end was pretty stark. Okay. I was looking All pretty right. damn goofy at first. And by the end, I was like, you know, like I said, I had, I had a little bit a little bit going. A little bit going. So, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll continue to uh, report back on the uh, skate life of Bob. Um, our good friend, Dr. Etheridge, uh, just texted in, tell your boy we can get him in if he needs us to look at that shoulder. <laughs> I mean, we're not there, but we're not not there. It's, um, <laughs> you know what it did kind of make me feel good about, though? I have been feeling that as you, as you get older, you never really fall, right? Like, because, you know, you're not playing football. You're not like, I mean, may, 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 you know, maybe you are. I don't want to speak for you. Maybe, maybe you are still out there, like, playing, like, know a hardcore like adult basketball league that's really physical well, they call it uh, ancient athletes right yeah yeah maybe yeah. you are one of the psychos in ancient athletes but um i am i am i am not and so it's like you never really fall right so you see yeah. people fall and you think about falling you're like Ugh, that would hurt really bad right. and um like i said it fell a bunch and um certainly that last one hurt but but on the other side of it i feel pretty good okay. now I, I i cannot fathom how tom brady <laughs> still takes hits or any of these old quarterbacks like how's that work maybe dr etheridge could let us know like just because you're continuously getting hit your body can continue to get hit later in life like is it is is this shoulder like would this shoulder because i feel like the role was still pretty athletic like it didn't like it wasn't like all my weight and i just like planted and flopped like i was going head over heels and i hit like a, a tuck and roll to right. come up and avoid anything too major but like uh is, is it i guess if I had continued to just be hit my entire life, would I be better? I just I wonder I wonder what the science is. Calloused, if you will. 
He's like, used yeah. to it? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Okay. Because, like, relative to Brady, I'm way, way, way. And, and obviously, he takes care of his body. Like, Yeah, not even think about Brady. Like, think about Frank Gore. Yeah. We talked about him yesterday. Or uh, who's like, the old left tackle that just started at 40 years old for the Cowboys? Jason Peters. Yes. Yeah, jeez. And I'm biased, but the running back position is obviously like there's collisions. Yeah, big you time. You know, there's like sometimes even at tackle, like you're you're you know pass protecting. That's true. You know, and and you're gonna be bigger violent. than everybody at tackle. That's true. You're not yeah. gonna be bigger than everybody at running back. Uh, no, no, you're not. I wonder. I wonder what the science of that is. Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah. Huh. Who knows? Um, you got any hot skate tips? Uh, let me know though, as I'm uh. Getting back into the game uh, for Mark, the first time. Mark Cummy inside the Bayou 4 chat. T-Bob says he is having a midlife crisis, so he's only living to 66. Uh, hey, yeah, uh, I mean, dude. Do y'all really think T-Bob's going to live to 80? You never know. That's what I'm saying, dude. I feel like I feel yeah. like every year past probably like what? Like, I mean, I, 65 is kind of a, a crapshoot, maybe even if you're lucky. So who knows, dude? Who knows? And, and also, like, I, I've seen a lot of that when I've said midlife crisis. Midlife crisis does not technically mean midlife. Midlife crisis speaks to just doing something um, in, in an effort to kind of recapture your youth that, uh, that, that maybe you have not done in a while. And, uh, I think it can have a lot of different definitions. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I just think of it as like, yeah, yeah ex- exactly what I just said, right? I don't know if it's nostalgia or what, but like, Doing something, and maybe something that is embarrassing, um, kind of outside looking at or that you shouldn't be doing, uh, but you're 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 doing anyway. Like buying like a badass like sports car or something to feel right. like you were in high school once again. You know, speaking of uh, you know ancient athletes and taking hits when you're a little bit older. When I first moved here, I guess my first show was January of 2018. I felt like that's all I heard about. All I heard about was ancient athletes and football, softball, whatever sport it was, yeah. and how everyone we knew was playing at least one sport. Yeah. And I hear nothing about it now. Is that because all the ancient athletes that I knew became too ancient? I that's what I'm that's what I'm starting to think as well, probably. Okay. Yeah. I don't know for sure. But you see enough brothers in arms, you know, pop Achilles and tear shoulders and tear ACLs, and I think uh Eventually, you want to end up calling it a day. I mean, I'm probably going to get end up getting some <laughs> knee pads and elbow pads and stuff myself. But the question is, do I go with the wrist bone? Ooh. That's always been the question, right? I mean, that because you do catch yourself on your hands, and a broken wrist is all too possible. And so it's like that, that to me. Even when I was a little kid, that that's where I drew the line. I never wanted to wear wrist guards. I thought they looked pretty goofy. So. Like the old Don Joys that like, we used to like, wear, like when we sprain our wrist in football. No, they go over your hand, and they've got this little like plastic. I mean, I, they did twenty years. I don't know what they have now, but they got this little like plastic kind of thing right here, so that you can't, you can't like scrape your skin. You can't catch yourself to the point where you will, uh, where you will break, uh, where you where, where you will break your wrist. I'll never forget, dude. The first time it was almost like I had a movie. The first time I ever walked in a skate park when I was younger. Um, I, 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 you know, it all started with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, like yeah, I think most people, yeah. yeah. And uh, and so I finally convinced my dad to take me to an actual skate park. And as I'm walking in, there's this kid about my age just bawling, crying, walking out, and his arm is snapped. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, like a bone, like you could clearly see the angle. It wasn't like poking out the skin, but you could see that the bone was very broken. And I just remember thinking, like, oh wow, okay, 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 let's see. Let's see what happened. How did the Cajun Cannon take to uh, the skate park? Uh, I'm pretty sure the parents didn't mind because you just chill. I mean, you just, I mean, it's a long time to sit there, but you just go kind of sit there and read, I guess, for I was like about to say, six hours or whatever. Yeah, you better bring a book back Or you then. leave and come back, I suppose. I don't know that they were there the whole time. I actually don't know what my parents, that's a great question. Yeah. I have no idea what my parents were doing the entire time I was there. Um... <laughs> And then generally one of the parents would come and pick us up for like a sleepover or something. Mm. Yeah. That's all I miss yeah. when I'm in like Christ. You all have a sleepover, Danny? You know, like, I don't know, like get some candy. Or I feel something. like you, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. Too. I still feel like you and your friends had those. We do. With all of our kids. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Just last week at Monroe, we had six adults and eight kids in a house that, um, you know, is really being stretched to its limit with six adults and eight kids hanging out in there. Yeah, so. Most houses would be. That is fair. Um, real question is, will T-Ball wear a helmet while skateboarding? He needs to for safety, but man, will he look like a nerd? 
Yeah, look, I you know I'm old enough to not care about looking too cool, except for even maybe the Mexico thing. So no, I tried to buy a helmet, but it wasn't the right size. So <laughs> I will melon I will make a helmet. I know, I know. I bought large, and it mm. fits my wife. So it didn't fit me. So we'll. Uh, we'll <laughs> it looked like a yarmulke on you. We'll see. Um, it just didn't even like. It it sat like as high as like a Les Miles hat because I just couldn't even get I couldn't even start to get it over uh, my cranium. Uh, it, fit, wait, wait. it fit my wife. Did Caitlin try this helmet on? This is fair. Uh, Mark Cumby says uh, I think T Bob is more uh, of an identity crisis, and so that's fine. If you want to call it identity crisis, you don't, don't don't get hung up on the midlife thing. Okay, mm. don't get hung up. Just 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 uh, you know just trying to recapture my youth because I'm surrounded by kids. And I just got kids yelling at me 24-7, changing diapers 24-7. Just had to go shred, bruh. You know? You know? Get out there. Reconnect with Mother Earth. More Off the Bench coming up next. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Go to allstartoyotabatonrouge.com. All-Star Toyota. Baton Rouge. Dot com. Whether you're looking to buy new, used, or maybe you just want to rent a uh, vehicle for a trip or something, All Star Toyota Baton Rouge right there off Airline Highway, and they have it all, man. Um, the website's a great place to start. All Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. You check out all the great deals they have. You can actually order your vehicle straight from there online. They have a chat box where you can talk with sales members, service members if you need to set up a time whatever, whoever, they're the best. They're incredibly responsive. Like Jake, when you take your car in to get service, um, they constantly give you text updates and they respond. So it's like, hey, here's the deal. What do you want to do? Oh, go ahead. Or, oh, no, no, like whatever it is, it's just so convenient. All start to it a battery. Yeah, we're excited. We're only a couple of days away from renting that Sequoia. We're taking it on the road to the Senior Bowl with us to Mobile. Very excited about that. And you can rent a Sequoia today as well. Per day rental prices on the website, allstartoyotaofbatonrouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Time doesn't stop, and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
at Oxnard, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. It's on Join Me Tuesday, 1 to 3. We'll have Glenn West talking Tigers. We'll have Sharif Ishak on the Pels. We'll get you ready for LSU and Arkansas up in Fayetteville. Hunt Palmer Show, 1 to 3 weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Good evening, y'all. Uh, breaking news. Hey, happy birthday as well. It's my boy, Will Blackwell. Will Say Will. LSU All-American. Legend of the game. Father of three. Happy birthday, Will. Um, I think there was news. a nickname about like Father of Three, like a Game of Thrones, House of something. House Blackwell. You know, Blackwell is a pretty that's good pretty, that's pretty fantasy good. Very fair. house name for sure. Yeah, Will's not as good. Maybe like Sir William. That works. Yeah. Um, if he was just, like if he was a Hester, he would be just Will, not William. Well, he's actually he's actually I think Robert William. I'm not 100. percent I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, so Billy Will. Billy, yeah, Bob Bob Will. Billy, oh wait, no. Well, Williams. Uh, Bob Bill. Oh, my he brain's Bob Bill. Bob Bill, yeah. yeah. Bob, Bob Bill. Bill Blackwell, triple Bs. Uh, Alabama, speaking of multiple Bs, Alabama OC Bill O'Brien will return to the New England Patriots as offensive coordinator. Uh, Jake, Alabama fans have been yelling for years about how much they hate Bill O'Brien and hate Pete Golding. Well, B. Goldie joins Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. Bill O'Brien goes to uh, New England. So it looks like Alabama fans got their wish. They did. And sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for. Now, Alabama's Alabama. They can still go out there and hire a lot of people who even have jobs currently. You can take someone from a school yeah. because who doesn't want to be the offense or defensive coordinator? Well, maybe offense more than defense. And I know that it comes with a lot of pressure because of the games that they've won over the last decade plus. It also comes with a head coach that is pretty intimidating. <laughs> so there's a, and a fan base that expects excellence, not not greatness, but excellence. Yeah. So it comes with that, but also it can be a, a major stepping stone for your career. I mean, we've seen where the assistants, not even coordinators, but assistants from that staff have gone on and they've gotten head jobs all over the place. And so it's gonna be it'll be interesting. It will see like what philosophy they want to go with defensively. Obviously, they're going to want to be within the mold of what Nick Saban's always done. Offensively, though, you've kind of gone a little bit all over the place. I mean, you've yeah. had different philosophies. You've had different guys who had different backgrounds coming in. So there's going to be a, a long list of candidates. But let's see who really wants to take that job. Who wants those expectations? Who wants that pressure? Who wants that you know, feeling of having to be 100%? I'm not sure exactly. We'd have to go back. I'm not sure how exactly it's worked out for all the D coordinators, but it's worked out pretty well for the offensive guys, right? I mean, I mean, uh, Kirk, Brian Dayball. Kirk, Kirby was okay. Yeah, Kirby, Kirby would have been. Yeah. Yeah, Kirby would have been one of the longtime DCs there. It's worked out for him. Um, Brian Dayball was one of the OCs, is and worked out for him quite well. Bill O'Brien now finds his way back to the NFL, which certainly um, he wanted. So. Yeah, unfortunately, it is a very attractive job. Jeremy and Pruitt, I mean, as a defense coordinator, obviously got the job, just didn't do anything with it. You know what's really funny? That's the guy they all want back. Oh, I know. After clowning him so hard at Tennessee and saying so many mean and hateful things, Alabama fans. A lot fans, of human thumb jokes. Yep. Sometimes to go forward, you got to go back, and Alabama fans want to go back to the thumb. Um, the problem with that, I think, kind of philosophically, Jake, is they like Jeremy Pruitt's stats. 
I kind of think what they're not acknowledging is the different age of college football that we're in. Like, are is it are you is it possible to achieve Jeremy Pruitt stats playing in this SEC? I just don't think it is. Maybe in the Big Ten, yes, because like seven of the top ten off defense in the country were in the Big Ten or something because nobody yeah. plays often. So like, sure, there, yeah, whatever. But in the SEC, I don't think you can ever get back to like the like uh, you know the like nine or ten points a game that Jeremy Pruitt was uh, was given up. So I can't wait because if they do hire Pruitt, then when he fails to meet former Pruitt standards, you're just going to have Alabama tears and anger. The only thing I don't want to see is some like Jim Leonard. That would be uh, that would be awful. That would be everything that's bad in the world. <laughs> I mean, that would be a problem. Yeah. Uh, Jim is someone who I think very highly of. I think Jim's somebody that has the mentality to be able to handle coaching. I mean, he played over a decade in the NFL, so if Coach Saban was you know, coaching him through it, like he would take that coaching and wouldn't be like, this is my defense. I mean, he would work really well is what I'm saying, together with Nick Saban. He doesn't have a huge ego. So I think that he actually could be somebody that could take on. And as far as like the expectations, I think he could take those as well, being a former player and, and being in the spotlight and being a head coach for a little bit at Wisconsin. So that could be a scary partnership, Jim Leonard at Alabama, because, I mean, he's, he's one of the best. There's a reason why the Green Bay Packers and others offered him their defense coordinator job. So it's definitely a name because it's late in the game, too. And unless Jim wants to go to the NFL, because maybe he doesn't, maybe the current college football is not exactly what he's looking for. I don't know that. But if he wants to go to the NFL, like maybe that's what he's waiting on. Is Nick Saban going to kidnap Cliff Kingsbury and bring him back from Thailand to come BOC? Is he going to force him? Or does Cliff Kingsbury, he actually probably doesn't get OC, right? He kidnaps him, but he makes him be on the shadow staff first. <laughs> An analyst? Yeah, like he has to be an offensive analyst first. He's not allowed to jump straight back. If you come to back, OC. if you're Cliff Kingsbury and you have all that money coming to you <laughs> and you're in Thailand right now and you come back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama to be K- K- an analyst, K- K- do that. I got to have a real conversation with you. No. We got to no. talk about life. If it's, it's, it's Cliff Kingsbury, not Cliff Cuxbury. He ain't coming back. My not for rent, who's kind of one of our uh, resident Alabama fans in the chat. Says Nick is so bad at picking assistants overall. Golding took top two talent and had top 20 defenses. O'Brien had a QB developed by Sarkeesian and could not develop wide receivers or running backs. Do you agree, Jake? I, again, I think a lot of that comes with the the excellence that's expected there. I don't I don't think that necessarily those coaches did a bad job. I think no. it's all with, hey, we expect to be the greatest thing on turf or grass or concrete or yeah. any surface that we're on. We don't expect to be number two to anyone. So I think some of that probably falls into that category. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm inclined to agree. One of the other names to look out for as Vince Corner would be Glenn Schumann. We talked about him, 32-year-old co-DC over there at Georgia right now. He's a Bama grad. He went to Bama back in the day specifically for Nick Saban. And um, he was a GA there, mm-hmm. I think, for like a few years as well. So, I mean, it would be a big jump up for Schumann. But, you know, Saban might mm-hmm. be. Um, I don't well, think it would be a huge jump up. I mean, no, I, mean I guess he is still, already Georgia co-DC. And, and, and Muschamp's the other co-DC. And I think, I, think, I think just watching kind of the dynamic play out over the couple of games I saw them, I think Champ is more of, of the, you know, behind the scenes, getting some game plan together, because Schumann was the one in the middle of the huddle, like when they were coming to the sideline to make adjustments, like he was the guy that was in the middle. So I think he has the power. I don't think it's a situation because he's Cody C and Will Muschamp's the other guy who's been a head coach and very successful. It feels like that, you know, he's the pinpoint guy and Will's on the outside helping him out however he can. That makes sense. Um, jump up was probably a bad. Word for me. I just mean that he's, uh, I guess, more of those things. He's just young, 32 years old. But he's already young to be the Georgia co-DC and in the spot that you're talking he's about. He's been Jay. to Georgia since 2016 now. Yeah. He's from Georgia, from Valdosta. So, I mean. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I'd, I, I'm, I don't know if I'd leave Georgia right now. Yeah, I don't know. If I have anybody. It would kind of feel like you'd be, not only would you be leaving and joining the enemy, and, and in the player's case, like, the coaches may have their own thoughts about the players at the end of the day, like, you know, and, and how they feel, like uh, Jermaine Burton or something. But 
if they see the player in public to their face, they're probably going to be nice to them. If you're a coach and you leave, right, like you've probably burned all bridges with Kirby Smart, right? Like if you leave Georgia and go to Alabama and Nick Saban, I mean, maybe not, yeah. maybe not. Maybe yeah. Kirby doesn't care that much, but um, that is your most direct competition yeah. and the thing stopping you from, I mean, Kirby, Kirby's got big ideas, dude. Kirby's got ideas of not just being a dynasty. Kirby has the freakish want to be the best thing ever. Like, he he wants to beat Nick Saban's national championships the same way that Saban's been chasing Bear and arguably past Bear. Brian Kirby Smart wants past Nick Saban, and he's got a big head start on him. And I don't know that I see an NFL detour that will cost him years in the future either. I mean, you saw Kirby after the natty. What was he telling the crowd? He was going one, two, three, and then he was counting a third national championship as well. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how he would react to Schumann leaving and basically taking the same job at Alabama. Uh, Glenn Schumann, in his coaching career at Alabama and at Georgia, has won six national championships. Jesus. What? Man. I think about No all, perspective. Think about all those guys that – we're on Alabama staff that follow Kirby, including Kirby, and what their trophy case looks like at their house. You know who we don't talk <laughs> about? Uh, that's, I mean, that's a good point. Um, you know who we don't talk about that would be in that boat as well? We don't talk about Scott Cochran now. I know yeah. Scott Cochran went through yeah. the, the rough patch there with some mental health stuff, but... He's got the LSU ones, too. If you want to talk three. about the X Factor behind maybe a lot of Alabama's success and then Georgia's success. He's kind of the same type of way that we used to talk about how Tommy Moffitt was the X factor behind the golden age of LSU. Well, Cochran could be attributed to that. And I know correlation and causation is a sketchy thing to say. It's, you know, it always equals one another. But the slippage of Alabama, and I'll call it slippage. I'm not calling That's all I'll call it. The slippage of Alabama does correlate direct, and the rise, of, it correlates directly with Cochran leaving and uh, going to Athens with Kirby. but LSU grad, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah. LSU, he, was a, he was my first strength coach when I got to LSU. I knew that. I just yeah. figured, I didn't know he came from LSU. Yeah, I LSU thought maybe grad, he was somewhere else. I, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I feel like John Curtis grad. I mean, there's a good chance if you worked in, that, in the weight room at that time, you had some Curtis ties. I was going to say, in that Tommy Moffitt's etymology, doesn't he come from the Curtis weight room? That's where he coached. Originally? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that makes sense for sure. Um, so big news out of Alabama. Uh, somebody calling for an LSU coaching change. Uh, let's talk about it next here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to ITI Technical College, itichallenge.edu, itichallenge.edu. It is right there off of Airline Highway, y'all. A local family-owned campus for over 30 years. And check it out. Remember, Financial aid is available in the forms of grants, scholarships. Uh, they accept tops even. So as you look to change your life, um, just know that you have um, some financial aid packages working in your favor. And if you go to itechcollege.edu and you look at all the different programs that they have and whether you want to be in like drafting, instrumentation, administration, um, they have programs for all of it. Go check it out and see what's for you at itichallenge.edu. You can check it out in person as well. 13944 Airline Highway in Baton Rouge. Incredible campus. You'll be blown away. Get a tour today. And you can also pick up the phone and give admissions a call. Let them know what you're looking to do, and they're going to help you. They always say they want to help you get to the finish line. That is the main goal. 877-591-1070. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford has $4,000 off MSRP plus $1,000 Ford credit cash on new 22 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. That's $5,000 off plus 0% financing. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Time doesn't stop and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, Intel, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. 
Louisiana. It's a place defined by culture, by pride, by passion, by people who do more than love this place. They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us, and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal. Always. business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank. Championship Sunday in the NFL playoffs. Tune in Sunday at 2 p.m. when the Eagles host the 49ers for the NFC Championship. Then the Chiefs host the Bengals at 5.30 for the AFC Championship. Right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. <laughs> All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Esther and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Hey. Welcome back. I don't like this. The Snaps text group. I'm jealous that I'm in another text group. You're in more text groups than anybody I know. I oh, know. I have one called Meatheads. That's fine. Wow, why am I not a meathead? Because you're not a meathead. What? I'm not a meathead. Mm -mm. Is, is it possible to, at one point in your life, bench 450 pounds and not be a meathead? Now who's jealous? Yeah, <laughs> I am upset. It's ridiculous. You know what? Seriously, Who's in though, meatheads? I just... Bobby and my producer, yeah. I mean, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Now, but now that you've... I didn't know if it was some, like, old LSU boy. Now that you kind of got a little, like, fired up, I think we do need to create, like, a, like a special side little bar. Another text one. group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It'll be, like, all the other co-hosts that we work with uh, stick them into a giant text group. I'm sure they'll all be very pleased about that. Everybody loves when they get randomly added to a new text group, right, boys? I actually don't mind. Isn't it. that the hotness? Like no, no, nobody gets annoyed at that. If you ever. if you want to respond, respond. I mean, there's times where we us four have a, a group chat, and sometimes we respond one after another. Sometimes we throw something in there and nothing. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I mean, half the time I use it as a uh, just a yeah, me too. Dumping for weekend winners, for ideas. I throw it in there. Yeah, yeah. And stuff to talk about. Like there's a lot of Eli Apple hate going on in our uh, in our text group right now. We get that a bit, though. 
First, Jake, um, there was a comment earlier, uh, since, you know, we are an LSU show. Oh, I thought you were t- telling me what was in the uh, the snaps group text. Oh, wait, I forgot. Um, <laughs> oh, they're Aaron Murray, which you should all listen to Snap Sub to the pod. Just type Snaps Podcast, you'll find it first thing on Google. Um, Aaron Murray is saying that he's putting Dan Mullen to Alabama as OC out there. I don't think it would happen. I don't think Dan Mullen wants to be subservient to Nick. But I would hate that. Because I think that Dan Mullen is a very good coach. I think he's a very good offensive mind. And I think yeah, potentially yeah, sure. if you gave him those players and said, Dan, you don't have to recruit. Like all we want you to do is almost like an NFL coach, just coach the offense and develop this. I, I mean, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. But I think that Dan Mullen would be wildly successful if it did. I, incredible offensive mind. I, I think he's a better coordinator, maybe even than head coach, because of the recruiting stuff. That doesn't seem like he really wants to do a deep dive into, and that's not being like disrespectful or hating. It's just some guys want to coach ball, right? Well, yeah, now, now you can't do it. Coach, you it, don't coach. You ball. can't do it anymore. What are we um, talking about? I, I don't know. I, I co-hosted a show with with New Heisel and and, and Dan at the national championship. He seems very happy. He seems very, very happy. I I mean, he had a smile on his face and a song in his heart. He was ready to roll and just laughing and talking ball. I I can't see him going to Tuscaloosa and and getting involved in that. I don't think so either. I'm just saying if somehow uh, Nick Saban's the ultimate recruiter. If he somehow did sell him on it, that would be bad for everyone. No, we don't we don't need I mean, LSU suffered at the hands of Dan Mullen too much. And you may say, oh, you know, well, you beat him more than you didn't. And and I think that's true. But he beat you with less talent way more than he should have. Uh, Mullen did. He, and and it, was, it was without scheming. Like, out scheming Dave Aranda, one of the best coaches uh, that you have had. I mean, that was one time. of the, yeah, that was like the one that would get him, too. Yeah, you know, every Some time. coaches' matchups aren't even great. Yep. Just like players. Like, he did that it with guy's Felipe not even that Franks. good. Yeah. Because he's tight in now. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, no, but he's you know he's living in Lake Oconee in Georgia. He's loving life. He's 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 how about this? So he helps um, he helps coach the local Lake Oconee High School. I can't remember. I think his son wants to be a coach or maybe he plays. But either way, Dan Mullen goes in there once a week during football season and like helps him break down film. That's a it's a pretty good mind. Oh my gosh, to have you in imagine? the room breaking down film. And you're probably seeing if. I mean, it's high school football's changed, but you're probably seeing cover three, cover two, probably it. I mean, you know, you can run some zero yeah. if you want to get exotic and, and have some fun, but there's not a lot you can put in in high school. So Dan's probably going through the tape in about six minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get him, uh, get him ready to roll. Um, yeah, just quickly. Well, I guess it begs the impact. How much? How much of an impact can or begs the question? How much of a bad can a mind like Dan Mullen have breaking down high school film? He can immediately figure out, can he immediately come up with things that high schoolers could run to take advantage? If he's a good coach, that's what coaching is, being able to relate it down to your players. I'm not a good coach. And so when I'm coaching my third grade flag football team <laughs> and I'm saying terms and words and like you got they're, they're kind of looking at me. He drops back into coverage. And I'll never forget <laughs> one of our – one of our, my players, his mom, is a teacher in the grade that the team was this year. And I'm at practice, and I'm kind of saying different things. I'm like, hey, I don't think they know those six things that you just said there. You're going to have to kind of figure out a way to, to kind of – I think I, like, when I was like, you know, when you get in this void here, you got to – and they're like, I don't think they know what that void is. Yeah, it's a choice route, okay? So if the safety <laughs> stays high, then you're going to just plant right here in the middle of the zone. Yeah. If he comes and attacks you, want you bam, right over the top. Yeah. Even coaching <laughs> high school football, like I helped out um, 20, I don't know, whatever year that was. I helped out uh, with Calvary Baptist in Shreveport. My brothers were on the coaching staff. And I'm like, I'm just going to help out. And trying to relay what you know, what you see to a high school mind, like there's a skill in it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, huge respect to teachers and coaches because it's one of those things where you think you can because you have all the knowledge, but I'm with you, Jake. The second you go to actually start the coaching, you realize, like, oh, wait, how do I communicate this? Like, how do I – I noticed that trying to coach, like, you know, eight- and nine-year-olds kind of a few years ago back in the day is that it just – yeah, shout out to all those great – teachers, little league coaches, or any coaches and teachers, really, for uh, being able to do that. It is a true, true, true skill, for sure. 
Um, coming up next, let's close out hour number one above the bench. What you got? Real quick, I will say that it, it does feel like Alabama will go after a name like Dan Mullen. I don't think it will be Dan Mullen, but if they've shown anything outside of maybe a hire or two, they've they've gone big. I mean, they've gone and, and gotten some big yeah. names, and they want to have some juice like Lane Kiffin and, and Bill O'Brien. Like they they've gone after some guys off Sarkeesian was a big Sarkeesian's name. Sarkeesian's a huge name. Day. Obviously, head coach of Texas now. Now, defensively, not so much. Defensively, they haven't done that as much. Yeah. But offensively, the other side, because Nick wants, at least when I was with him, he's got the defense, but the defense coordinator, the offense, you're the head coach of the offense. Like, he never, like, him and Jimbo would get into it, but when we were yeah. going ones-on-ones, they wouldn't get into it over anything else. So, like Jimbo was the coach on this field. Nick and, and Muschamp were over on that field. And, like, we never interacted with them unless we were going good on good. Yes. Right. So, like, I think you want a big yeah, person you, you now, need, somebody need, with experience, yes. somebody that's been a head coach maybe, like Lane, um, like Bill O'Brien. They like had that, like, like Sarkeesian. They've had that experience of being a head coach. Yeah. So, that wouldn't surprise me. So, if, if I'm putting a short list together – it's almost like a requirement lately to be a head coach somewhere else before you come. Yeah, Saban got a NFL head coach that had won multiple divisions. And, and general O'Brien manager. To come be, yeah. To come head be. coach, general manager to come be an OC in college. <laughs> the OC. So uh, now I'm just picturing like Cliff Kingsbury getting a lap dance in Thailand and then the girl turns around and it's like a Mission Impossible mask and she rips it off and it's Nick. And, and Cliff doesn't even fight it. He just kind of drops his head and he's like, Okay, coach, I'm coming. Let's let's get out of here. And the next thing you know, he's announced as Alabama OC. Danny, make the video. All right, when we get back, uh, yeah, just 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 Photoshop it. That's what people always tell my wife. She gets so annoyed. Just photo, you can Photoshop it, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, close on hour one night. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Get Gordon and get it done and i mean get it done and look right now you got gordon athletes members of the g team getting it done shout out angel reese now the double double record holder are we up to 20 in a row i believe right after uh last game uh shout out angel reese member of the g team as well as all of coach mulkey squad who will talk to at 8 30. look so bottom line gordon and the g team are getting it done on the field on the court in the classroom if you need to get done in the courtroom, you need to get Gordon. They're calling 225-888-8888. If you can't get to the phone right now, go to getgordon.com. On the website, you can do it all, right? You can get a consultation set up right there on the uh, site, top right corner of the site. If you want to have a live chat with someone right now, it's in the top left of the site. You can find cases that they handle, client results. All that information is on their website. Again, that is getgordon.com, getgordon.com, 225-888-8888. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Andrews to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Have you ever heard the tale of the misunderstood bull? A menacing beast who was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment Infinity QX80. Experience the Infinity QX80 at your local Infinity retailer. Time doesn't stop and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. Louisiana, it's a place defined by culture, by pride. 
by passion, by people who do more than love this place. They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us, and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal, always. Mascona inviting you to join us for Tuesday's AFR. The Pels and Tigers are both back on the hardwood. We'll preview the action and we'll keep counting you down to the NFC and AFC championship games. It's AFR 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like uh, the uh, Oscar Best Picture noms are out. Let's hear them. Can you get them all in in two minutes? I, mean, I don't know, bro. They, they must be choosing one a month. Right now, if you are the best movie of the month, you get to be nominated for Best Picture. I am not, you know, I'm I'm a pretty chill guy. I believe in participation trophies. I think oh. they're fine. Um, what are you talking about? We grew up getting participation. Like if you played sports, you got a little like oh, no. crappy little like soccer player Ooh. on like a thing at the end of the year. Not in the, not in the Port City, we didn't. Um, uh, maybe if you got runner up, maybe maybe. Are you are you telling me? In oh, I guarantee the, you. What about you boys? When you played little league sports at the end of the year, did you not get like a little medal or like a little like crappy little plastic? We trophy? didn't. For soccer, yes. For basketball, no. Okay. Yeah, I got. Did y'all win? We, we didn't get anything. Yeah. Like if you didn't win, if you came in second, your team got a second place trophy individually. I don't think you got anything, but you had to be first or second to get anything. Um. Well, whatever. I think. I think that's really. I think. I think. I think acting like giving a kid a little plastic no. thing to put on. Ratchet City, you did it right. It is so beyond stupid, but you can win. <clears throat> that said, there's so many Oscar Best Picture noms that I'm feeling a little bit like too many participation trophies. So we got All Quiet on the Western Front. Love to see it. Right, seen that one. Uh, Avatar: The Way of Water. Not seen that. The one. Banshees of Inchernidrin. Have started that one. Hadn't finished it. Elvis. Oh. Definitely seen that one. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Not there seen we go. That one. The Fablemans. Is that the Spielberg one? Yep, not seen that one. Previewed uh, it. No, doesn't look like my type of movie. Tar. Mm, not seen that one. Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> you know I've been in that one three times. Triangle of Sadness. That just no, sounds man. intense. Yeah, it's not real sad. Uh, and then Women Talking. I haven't seen that one. All Which right. is just actually two hours of just two women talking. It's an unbelievable movie. I'm just kidding. I made that up. I have no idea what we're talking about. Scene four, heard. haven't seen six of the ten. Okay, yeah, I'm ten. Jeez, it really was almost one per month. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Give it to him, you cowards. Top Gun Maverick, give it to me. Something somebody's actually seen. Everybody's I, actually seen. I'd be okay with that. All Quiet on the Western Front. I'd be okay with or that. Or everything. Hour two of OTB coming to next. Mailback. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Restore me, refuel me. Rejuvame, rejuvamemedical.com, rejuvamemedical.com. You want to feel younger, bigger, stronger, faster. Buy some PF flyers. Not really. Oh, yeah. Do some rejuvamate. 
then buy mm. PF flyers and tell people it was the shoes. When really it was Jude Mix. That's not nice. You tell people it was Jude Mix. It helps you. They still sell PF flyers? Um, I'm sure. Let's look them up. I'm sure. They still sell Rejuve Mix. They do. HRT. Maybe some metabolization optimization. I don't care if you're male, female, 20, 30, 40, 50. You want to feel better. Get that energy rolling out of bed, rolling into bed. Um, they'll create a plan for you, customized for you and what your body needs, okay? Because you draw your labs yeah. and figure out exactly what's going on. And uh, again, ask about that. It's like gluten, gluten, I don't know the technical term. Ask about metabolization, optimization when you're in there. They're the best. Rejuvenate Medical. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $8,500 off new 2022 Ram 1500s. New 2022 Ram 1500 trucks on our lot now with $8,500 off MSRP. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right. Bayou. I've got that blue sky. I've got that sunshine. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. At Auctioneer, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioneer Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, We've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Have you ever heard the tale of the misunderstood bull? A menacing beast who was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment of grace. Quite grand, yet quiet and nimble. Infinity QX80. Experience the Infinity QX80 at your local Infinity retailer. Time doesn't stop and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Good morning, everybody. It is 8 a.m. on Tuesday, January 24th. Your government taco forecast in Baton Rouge. Expect cloudy skies with a high of 68. Coming up on OTB, LSU women's basketball coach Kim Mulkey joins us at 8.30. And Nick Underhill of New Orleans.Football joins the show at 9 a.m. You can follow today's show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at OTB underscore ESPN. Or catch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel and subscribe for daily content. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio, starts now. Where do we go? 
All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if Avatar, is Avatar is good enough to get nominated for Best Picture? I wonder. I don't really care about seeing the movie, which sucks. I just wanted to see it in theater, see what James Cameron has uh, has. I know has it, it recently made over the $2 billion mark, which would obviously, like, that was the... That's all that matters. The main goal, so... Yeah, I mean, that's all that matters. James Cameron stays hot. Let's see what that old IMDb is talking about. Uh, 7.8 out of 10. Why are you showing me a picture of Lisa Ann cutting strawberries, Daniel? Yeah, I'm going to call you on an answer, answer for your horniness this early <laughs> in the morning. Oh, is this uh, Pond King I, Six? <laughs> that's actually from the Off the Bench Twitter because we follow her. Uh, I know. I saw the same tweet you were just showing this morning, and it made me actually think of Jake <laughs> because I think she tweeted, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, Oh, uh, which Jake told me one yeah. time when, uh, I don't know, somebody eating something fat and delicious. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Tastes pretty good. <laughs> it tastes pretty good, though, dude. Um Nominees for best actor, Jake. Your guy Austin Butler made it. I hope he. I mean, I don't. He. I mean, he won. Um, gosh, what he win? Whatever the the pre Golden Globes. Yes, he won that. But obviously, you're gonna have uh, more competition because it's not broken into categories. I would love for him to win. Um, you know, tragically, like Lisa Marie is at that award show and you know, passes away a couple of days later, so I think it'd be a great tribute to her. That just happened? Oh, I missed that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Lisa Marie was at the Golden Globes. He, yeah, I saw her at the table. He gives so her, nice. yeah, yeah, I mean, he stops his speech and kind of gives the Presley family, what? Um, what happened? you know, a lot of love. Uh, I don't think they know yet. Wow. Or if they do, I, I haven't seen it yet. So, Damn. Yeah, pass I mean, T, two, three days after that. So, that's it'd be crazy. a great, uh, you know. And he deserves it, so it's not like they should be giving it to him, but it'd be a great tribute. So, also Butler, Colin Farrell, uh, Brendan Fraser, which I know is one of the uh, kind of heartfelt fan favorites yeah. as the Brendan Fraser comeback continues. Paul Mescal and Bill Nighy. I don't know uh, those last uh, two. All right, let's dive into a little OTB mailbag. Special delivery! I have this special delivery for Off the bench. And look, it is marked most urgent. We'll be writing to you. The internet. What the f is the internet? All right, my guy, Cody Walters. On Twitter asks, I need an ethics check. Is using the handicap. Stall in a public bathroom, so handicap in parentheses the largest. Stall in a public bathroom, the same as parking in a handicap parking spot. Legal ramifications aside. Oof. Ooh. Mar, I know you're a fan of ethics. Right. This is a great question. Huge fan of ethics. This is a great question. Um, I mean, if you know there are no handicapped people in the building, I don't think it's as big of a deal. Parking what spot, if, I feel but you, what if? I feel you, though. I feel you You on don't that. know, though, because you're, you're in there. Yeah, I True. feel you on that. But, but like, how's it any different from parking in a handicapped spot? Somebody could pull into the lot, kind of unforeseen kind of thing. Exactly. And then they're in the same building, and they, mm -hmm. they got to use the bathroom. They pulled yeah. the lot, they got to use the bathroom. That's more likely than a handicapped person coming into a building that wasn't mm. occupied by any handicapped people. No, I think I don't. I don't think so. I think I think literally the chances are the exact same. Okay, agree yeah. to disagree. Um, I do not think no, it's. Hold up, hold up. Though. I'm saying let's unpack this. If you show up, like if a handicapped parking spot is empty, and the handicapped bathroom is empty, they both have the same chance of being filled. There's no reason why one would be filled over the other. I don't know. There's maybe more... say for the fact that maybe the person doesn't have to use the bathroom. I just feel like there's more people out in the open in like a parking lot situation than if you're at your workplace. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, no, certainly at work. I mean, if, if you work in, so it sounds like we're all getting very defensive about the best bathroom in this building, which is the handicapped bathroom that is the I don't ever go in there. It's like, the bro, you should, it's huge. It's like half the studio. <laughs> yeah, I do too. It's incredible. <laughs> well, like, I mean, you can well, stretch out. Can I ask y'all this? Yeah. Why do you need that much room? Oh, it just feels good. Okay. <laughs> feels yeah. Good. It's got to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Because, I mean, the restrooms behind the 
you know, behind kind of on the back side of the building. Why They're pretty need, spacey as well for why you know, do you need tall restroom. ceilings in your home? You know? So you don't hit your head on. That's what I'm saying. Functionally, <laughs> they don't really do anything. You love they, tall ceilings. Don't they feel good? That is like whenever you build your house, they're going to have the tallest ceilings I've ever seen. I, I, I am a firm believer that you can directly track wealth and success as to how high your ceilings are. And um, for a while there, I was seeing my ceilings get a little higher. I've been stalled out for a little bit. I'm going to have to figure out how to get those things back up. But, uh, I mean, it's the same deal, right? It just feels good. Like, I don't know, especially with me, if I'm in some of those side bathrooms, it gets really tight. You know, my knees jammed up against the toilet paper machine. I'm, like, hitting the walls everywhere. Um, I'm in that one over there. I can literally spin, dance, do whatever I need to do. It's, um... Okay, here, I'll say it. It, it probably is a little messed up to use handicapped bathrooms. But if I don't see a handicapped person, I do it. Retweet. And it's wrong, and I'm not defending it, but I do it. I'm I don't, a big guy, and it gets very tight in normal stall. I, I don't yeah, I don't think it's the same. Like, taking a parking spot, I think, um, I think it's the worst offense. It's bad, but how would you feel? I know. If, somebody, if you walked if out of you there. you were going to the bathroom. Yeah. And you saw a wheelchair roll up outside yeah. the stall. Or waiting. And they really had to go. Yeah. Like about, you know, they were about to, you know, have an accident. And then you 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 have to walk out of uh, that stall. That would be a bad feeling. Mark Cumby says, I like the family restroom at the movie theaters. No, when I'm sitting there and I've got two little ones and the family restroom's locked and just some solo Joe comes out of there, I'm like, I, every time, like, I say something. I don't, like, let it slide. <laughs> I'm like, do you think that was important enough for you to take that family restroom when I got a kid holding his it's so urine spacious. in over here? It's so spacious, though. It doesn't matter. It's not for you. Uh, no, you're not wrong. It's for the fam. I'll never forget hearing uh, just some some very odd clapping and moaning sounds coming out of those <laughs> one time. I, I don't know what was going on in there. Uh, hashtag. There's a uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm like, episode of this entire Handicap thing like that sounds exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds good. So where does Larry David land? Oh, like the uh, the episode, he just like ends up like stealing a bathroom from like a handicap person. <laughs> of course, of course, somebody act- the the nightmare scenario actually yeah. happens to him. Uh, hashtag OTB mailbag. That was a great question, Cody Walters. Uh, it's National Peanut Butter Day. Crunchy or smooth? And when making a PBJ, what's your favorite jelly? Uh, I like I like both. I like crunchy and smooth. Yeah. I am not going to uh, discriminate. I love peanut butter. I love almond butter. I love it all. Yeah. Um, I've, I've lately been real into apple slices dipped in whatever peanut butter or almond butter doesn't matter. Drenched uh, or dipped? Uh, you will like, you know, I'm getting a Just scoop. scoop. A scoop. It's a spoon at this point. Yeah. The uh, apple is. Yes. Okay, definitely. I like that. But I do the almond butter, try to cut, you know, make it not so bad. Um, I think that if I make my ideal PB&J, it would be crunchy with grape jelly. Um, if I'm making the ideal toasted bread, oh, I didn't even think about that. Jif natural spreads easier. Uh, apple jelly. Oh, love apple jelly. I love Mayhaw jelly. What you got, boys? Smooth, crunchy is disgusting to me, honestly. Man, why so? I just don't like the texture of it. Huh? Okay. Interesting. Style palette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, <I> mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very. It checks out. Uh, what'd you got, Danny? Mom checks out. Uh, oh. Both, both are. She said I'd check out your mom. Yeah, that'd have been, <laughs> but, that'd have been the peak right shopping. there. Yeah. Um, hashtag OGB mailbag. Which actor would you pick to star in the movie about your life? Jack Black for T. Bob. Young Jack Black for sure. I, I would, I would, I would love that more than anything. What about Chris Farley? Uh, yes, yeah, so young, young Farley would play as well. Which yeah, I think Jack Black though. I, I think Jack Black over Farley. If, 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 I, if I had to pick a uh, gun in my head. I don't think I look like anybody, so I don't really know. Who's the tan kid from uh, Twilight? Taylor uh, Taylor Lautner. Well, yeah. um, I've seen Taylor uh, Lautner. I don't know about that one, Mario. Um, <laughs> Thank seen, you very much, Hester. When I was 15, actually, yeah. uh, ooh, somebody ooh, told me I looked like well, him. I was working out a lot. It well, made me feel really good. Well, also, Wait, though, also, though, also, though. <laughs> no, it was a waitress. It was a waitress. Also, though. <laughs> I wouldn't even hate him. I just, like, he's, you know. The actor is always, cat. like, the better-looking version of you, right? Like, maybe, like, a chubby Parks and Rec Chris Pratt could play me. I don't look like Chris Pratt, 
but you always get like bumped up in the looks department okay. when the actor plays it. I wasn't even trying to hate on Mario. Like get, that was uh, just you get, old, you get like Shane <laughs> West. There, like, in... like Shane West could play you. Okay. I, I can yeah. definitely see that. 100%. I mean, Shane, I'm, I'm like 210. You know, Shane's got to get... Again, though, again, though. Actors. It's true. Everybody's going to be tinier. You just make them look big by how you film the movie. Right? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, it's, that's fair. It's all kind of tricks. What about Danny? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to think of. Uh, give me Oscar Isaac. I don't think I look like him at no, all, but no, I like no. him. But in the realm of what we're exactly, talking, exactly. yes. Exactly. I can see Lautner and Oscar Isaac for you too. Uh, Mario, post that 15-year-old photo of you, or it doesn't exist. Uh, Camille Trebeau says, any chance Scott Frost gets a look at Ooh, uh, Alabama? That's actually a really good question. That that See, that he fits the mold. Yep. He's a former head coach. He's a good offensive play caller. He has to go to the rehab center for failed coaches in Tuscaloosa to get another opportunity. That one makes a lot of sense. So, Scott Frost way more likely, in my opinion, than Dan Mullen. Have you heard of the, like some of the rumors surrounding Frost yep. about maybe how off the rails it went? Maybe like... But again, he's not leading the program, and Nicky yeah. Sabine will not allow that. I guess it's kind of like what happened to Sark a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's exact, you know, that, that was the exact kind of literal rehab spot. So, uh, yes, yeah, Scott Frost would maybe make sense. How do you all feel about peanut butter banana sandwiches? I uh, love them. Uh, Did Elvis butter. love them? Yeah, he liked fried. He liked okay. fried. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> fry them. But. Um, I've never had one. I've tried the peanut butter but banana I would love bacon. It. Not gross to me. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, I've had peanut butter bacon uh, like smoothies or whatever. They're, they're pretty good. It's a little heavy, for sure. <laughs> and it's a lot. Yeah, it gets lodged. Uh, right Hashtag OGB Mailbag. What's more impressive, Joe Burrow winning in Buffalo or a rookie, Purdy, making it to the NFC Championship? Hmm. Like, after the warm-up video, I never thought Joe was going to lose. Um, Purdy's story is great, man. And, it, and it's a great story of someone who bet on themselves going to Iowa State, being from Arizona. And he went there, and think about this, like played four years of football, never had to look over his shoulder, never had to worry about them bringing in a five-star guy to take his spot. He went there, played a lot of football, and high-level football. Remember, that's when they were playing in Big 12 championship games. So he had all of that experience yep. there. And then, like, so when you get thrown into being the guy in the NFL, it's still a jump up, but you have so much experience to kind of fall back. Four years of starting in a major conference. Yeah. And he he looks uber confident out there. I mean, like, there's never been a time I'm like, oh, rookie moment, rookie moment. Like, I know sometimes he can try to do maybe a little too much with him <laughs> sprinting out and running backwards and all that, but I think that's just a part of his game. But it's impressive how confident he looks. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a crazy thing that I saw earlier. Um, so EPA expects points added per play, right? It's it's a metric that uh, analytics guys love, and some will say it's a team set, whatever. The point is. Um, So if you look at play, if you if you look at the PFF grades and efficiency right now, uh, Burrow out of out of all the quarterbacks uh, in the playoffs in this playoffs, uh, Burrow is the leader in terms of grading uh, per D per D. I can't help but say it that way. I can't say per D. I gotta say per D. Brock Purdy. Uh, yeah, I always want to say per D. I like it's like mammal per D. It's mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but Purdy leads in EPA, and so he's he's technically the most efficient quarterback. In this playoffs thus far. So look, yes, is Kyle Shannon putting him in a great spot? Is he on a great team? Absolutely. Trey Lance didn't look this good. No. Jimmy Garoppolo has looked good, but kind of not even this good at times. I mean, in a weird way. So no. Is there a report that he could come back for the Super Bowl? Would you would you even think about that? I think you gotta ride I mean, with Yeah, you ride with it. who got you there. Um, no, I mean, Wally Pip, a little bit. I understand that, but no no. Wally Purdy. It's just like when Brady, you know, took over for Drew Bledsoe, like Drew could come back. But what Brady had done, remember Drew <laughs> had to play in that playoff game. But yeah. when Tom Brady got healthy, it's like, hey, Drew, thank you for your service. But I don't remember Drew playing in the playoff game. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, and if Drew Bledsoe wasn't unseating Tom Brady, no, Jimmy Garoppolo should not unseat Brock Purdy. Um, okay, whatever. I think Purdy's more impressive because. I'm not shocked that Burrow's in the AFC Championship. 
like we we know too much about Joe Burrow to be surprised uh, when he dominates. All right, let's see if we can maybe get one more in here. Huh? Okay, this might not. Uh, hashtag OGB mailbag. Who in the crew is most likely to scarf down the last piece of king cake? Initially, my mind thought Mario. Because I think Mario would eat it with no remorse. Yeah. But. He would ask first, though. He'd ask first. You would not. Um. We got king cake in the basement, by the way, according to my inbox. Yeah, Mario would be like, you want king cake? And just eat it. Like, he'd mumble it and eat <laughs> it. Like you, like, you would just go, and you take the whole box and take it home. Wow. Okay, okay. I, I don't have a great leg to stand on, given some recent events. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, here's a king cake for OTB. There's definitely, there's, 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 there's definitely, look, bride's gone by was delicious. We're just going to have some. Um, <laughs> you son of there's <laughs> definitely a world out there where, yes, I used to eat the last slice of pizza, kind of no questions asked and stuff. Now... I try to avoid it because eventually somebody's going to break that seal. But I do think if the last piece sits there long enough, I have no problem with anybody grabbing it. It's only if it's like still getting scarfed down or everybody hasn't had a piece and you snag another one where we start to run into issues. So, so you were voting for yourself. I'm just acknowledging that there are times in my life when potentially this could have allegedly been somewhat accurate. Um, Hopefully not now, but, you know, I did just take all those wings. Um, I do agree with this. Yeah, you, you've taken the wings, the pie, and the king cake that we've had here recently. Uh, from Scott inside the chat, uh, Romo was shocked that Burrow and the Bengals might be the real deal. Yeah, that it, even if that was, like, forced or faked or whatever, that was highly annoying. Like, he was People acting shocked. Oh, my Romo. God, the Bengals, they're going to do it. It's like, who do you think represented the AFC last year? People are turning on Romo, dude. I don't know what it is. There's some in the air. It's more and well, more Tony it, Romo complaining going on. It, yeah, and and Tony at, at first, like I was, I was loving it, but it just it doesn't feel authentic at all. He seems a little drunk with power, sometimes. Hmm. Well, you, I mean, you, that's your world way more than it is. No, I, I agree. Like, I think I think I, know, but. I think he does a good job. But recently, I agree with you. I couldn't deal yeah. with that. And last year too, before the Bengals had even won the game, he was like, "The Bengals are going to the Super Bowl." And me, who had a bet on the Bengals, it's like, "Shut up! <laughs> Why are you doing well, that?" Well, it's just see, that, that's a cra That's just an insanity criticism, though. There, Mario. It's just my opinion. No, I know, but you just went so out of your way to tie it into specifically your gambling fate. Like, <laughs> like that holds no water with anyone else. Okay, fine. I wanted Joe Burrow to win. Go Tigers. Uh, no, ah, man. Everybody fought the same way. Uh, he was right, though. They did go to the Super Bowl. Ultimately. <laughs> still annoying. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Um, I, I, I still My like problem is, is, well, I mean, I'm, do you, oh, are you I watching know, the Jim, broadcast? Says Mac <laughs> Lindsay. Oh, I don't know, Jim. Uh, it's just yeah. like there's been a couple things that he's gotten wrong, and that's fine. Like that's good. That's gonna happen, but it's just I don't know. It's just it feels like it's forced sometimes, and I don't like. I think I think Greg Olson's been doing a hell of a job. I think he's getting better and better each each week. Well, guess what? There's only a matter of time till the internet hates Greg Olson as well. Maybe that's how this thing goes. That's how this thing goes. I mean, and some like you know Tony. Oh, should they punt it here? Should they go for it? It's like if they went for it here, the coach would be fired. Uh, on the spot. Hey, new age of the NFL, baby. No. You go for it all the time. You would know. You watch Brandon Staley for two years. He went they for it all that. the time, then he didn't go for it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I say, he got conservative. <laughs> and he, it, there's an in-between there, yeah. Brandon. There's an in-between. <laughs> Mailbag in the books. More OTV next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hi, I'm Brandon Landry, founder and CEO of Walker. 
Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Green. This is Ryan Terrio with HudcoRoofing.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. No matter how big your commercial roofing job, Hudco can help. My patients come to me because they trust that I can get the job done at a high level. Ryan Terrio and Richard Tilly have the same level of trust when it comes to roofing. If you have a roofing issue, call Hudco Roofing. Give us a call 364-1007 and we'll come to your house and give you a free inspection. Louisiana. It's a place defined by culture, by pride, by passion, by people who do more than love this place. They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal, always. been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. At Auctioneer, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioneer Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioneer Andrews Institute, long live you. Have you ever heard the tale of the misunderstood bull? A menacing beast who was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment of grace. Quite grand. Yet <coughs> me, Jimmy Out and Mike Delacano for the Tuesday edition of Game Time presented by Bet Rivers. We're at Dozy Place on Government Street in the heart of Mid City. Game time presented by Bet River, 6 to 8 p.m. on 104.5 ESPN Bat River. Oh, yeah, All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. See, I know I'm a little bit older than you, but like uh -huh. when this song came out, I felt like it was really the first time that I didn't have to listen to like my parents' music. You know what I'm saying? Like in the car, ah, like whatever they were okay, listening to. Yeah. So like this genre of music, like when this song came out, um, Y'all hear me talk about Tony Rich Project a lot, uh, early days of Usher, 
Um, found my way to Beastie Boys, licensed to Ill. Like I know it came out way before then, but that's when I found my way to it. Uh, Buster Rhymes, Beck. Like that's when. You know, we we talked grandma into taking us to Sam Goody. We'd get the cassette single that the parents didn't necessarily know about. Couldn't know about it. And like this song is like peak Ridgewood Middle School for me. I never bought cassettes. I'm assuming they came with the same parental advisory sticker that my CDs did. Probably. I don't remember. So they might. That's a good question. But it was just a single. Like it had had probably you know one on each side. Probably had two songs on it. But they were like. You know, three ninety nine or something. Did singles? Did 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 they used to have vinyl singles back in the day? Like, did you just buy a vinyl that was just one song? I don't. Do you know? Not that I ever have come across. Not to say that they haven't since, but yeah. I mean, CDs and cassettes. I know they both did. So, if you carried CDs in like a flippable like CD, uh, what, what did we call them the other day? We were talking about them. CD what binder, did, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It uh, is. What did you carry a bunch of cassettes in? Did you have like a tackle box? There's like a carrier, yeah. My mom had one. Hell yeah, bro. She Sick. kept it like in the middle, like it, actually the middle consoles of your of your vehicle. Certainly, if you had an SUV or a truck. Oh, they had the, when you when you pulled it open, slots. they had the slots that you put oh, the cassette tapes in, that's and that's right. where they were stored. That's right. Yeah. Um. You know me, I love miniatures. I always loved cassettes, like eight millimeter videos. Because they were just tiny little VHSs. Yeah. And it was so satisfying. They were just so tiny, so cute. Just tiny little VHSs. Um, I mean, you still have some of that. I mean, like with your painting, your miniatures. Like, oh, no, I still love yeah, no, no, I, You I, love I things miniatures. small. I, love miniatures. I just figured out as many times as I've been to Storyland. Um, I somehow, last time I went around at Christmas, just figured out there is an entire outdoor miniature train New Orleans. Um, there. That's always on display. They got people working on How've it constantly. I have no idea, no clue how I've missed it. It's 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 fascinating. It's got all wonderful history tidbits. Um, I don't want to misspeak, so I'll, I'll I'll look it up so I can give them to you. But some really fascinating facts about the first uh, rail line in New Orleans. I think it was called like Old Smoky or some really 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 cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> I would love to take the train like on a on a long massive trip. Yeah, I would too. Like across the country. I, I, the biggest failure of America is that we do not have, um, like consistent luxury, uh, passenger trains. Right, like in Europe. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've, I've now Europe's a lot closer together than our country. Well, I mean, I yeah, I guess so, but there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to take a train to Atlanta, like cat, like to like, have it be more normalized. You know, you can. I'm not saying you can't do these things. But it's not like a part of the culture. And right. like, why is the Southeast not connected by trains? Probably the Civil War where they blew up all the railroads. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a historian. I'm just saying it, it like, it should uh, build the Baton Rouge New Orleans train. That's what I'm actually saying. I thought you told me about that like two years ago. It's been, it's been like, it's been like 10 years. Every, every politician, when they want a pos- positive headline, takes a picture with the Amtrak people. And they're like, it's happening. And then it never ends up happening. Uh, so I wish it would actually end up happening. It would be, it'd be, uh, it'd be awesome. I know we got to go to break here pretty soon. We got Coach Mulkey. Yeah, Coach Mulkey. Did y'all see the graphic I sent the group text where it showed like where the last, gosh, I don't know how many, you just smoked that TV. And that would be the second one of those that you've broken. That's true. I was doing the dance from Triple R. It showed the graphic of where the the national championships have come from, and it was like a small circle just in the small southeast. Small circle, yeah. I mean, it's just Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia. Yeah, it's literally just that. Can you like? So we live in that world, like we're in that world, and and LSU's been the second most successful still, even with Georgia winning back to back in the last twenty years outside of Alabama. Can you imagine like? And, and we still kind of feel like, man, we, we want to be more involved. Can you imagine? Like being outside that circle and just how much of an overtaking that feels like you have to overcome. It does. It, it, to me, it always points out how we are kind of in a bubble environment here and how um, regionalized college football truly is. You know, and why the NFL sometimes college football feels big here, like even bigger than the NFL. But of course, it does. We are in the literal mecca. This is why the NFL is bigger everywhere else, just because we happen to live in the, uh, like I said, the mecca. Uh, all right, 
Let's uh, go to break. When we get back, we got Coach Mulkey stop by talking about Angel Reese setting records as a team. Top five. Continue to dominate. Getting revenge for the Alabama men's team did. Hmm. Keep it locked here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to centralplumbing.org, 925-8552, centralplumbing.org. 925-8552 is the number. Uh, look, 24-7 emergency service. The Payne family's been at it forever. And don't let their last name fool you. It is a painless process when you deal with Central Plumbing because people come out immediately. There, It's a flat rate pricing, licensed, bonded, and insured, uh, quality work, right? Great warranty once the work is done as well. And um, it's nice because essentially uh, whatever the problem is, man, they've seen it. They can fix it so you don't lift a finger and your issues are taken care of. 225-925-8552 is the number. Centralplumbing.org is... You good? <laughs> Such a plum- Dude, do you you need to get your plumbing checked out. Do they do throats? <laughs> do you plumbing, do you do throats? Do you it's, do throat work? 225-925-8552. Damn. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Toyota in Opelousas is here to help you ring in the new year with no markup and you'll never pay over MSRP. And we have new inventory arriving daily. So happy new year from our Corvell Toyota family to yours. Time doesn't stop and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. faster than ever before streaming us for into the future and the revolution is closer than you think rtc etel and vision are now rev new name same company louisiana it's a place defined by culture by pride by passion by people who do more than love this place they celebrate it elevate it champion it They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us, and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal. Always. business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. It's on Join Me Tuesday, 1 to 3. We'll have Glenn West talking Tigers. We'll have Sharif Ishak on the Pels. We'll get you ready for LSU and Arkansas up in Fayetteville. Hunt Palmer Show, 1 to 3 weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. <laughs>
All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Mm. Skateboard's call my name, boys. Uh, welcome back to OTB. This is my favorite part of every week. Uh, we talk to the best coach on campus. Um... Potentially one of the best coaches, if not the best coach else who's ever had, the legend, Coach Kim Mulkey. And her team right now is, uh, well, it's just getting pretty ridiculous. Uh, now 20-0. and 0. We'll talk about Angel Reese setting the double-double records. Um, they're on the verge of having the best start to a season for any sport ever in LSU history, as I think softball in 2015 went 25-0. And Coach Mulkey, I think a congratulations is in order. This is your 23rd season as a head coach, and it is your 23rd season with at least 20 wins. Uh, unbelievable consistency there, Coach. Congratulations. Well, I take that as a compliment, but it's kind of hard for me to accept because guys, you just don't understand how hard it is to do, and it goes to all those players. All those young ladies who came and played for me, this is their – acknowledgement not mine I was just the one that happened to be in charge and happened to be the one that got to be around them and coach them and uh, what a career it's been and uh, it's been an incredible career you've seen plenty plenty of incredible players come through um, Angel Reese the latest in that line and uh, I mean it's 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 it's, it's fascinating on multiple uh, fronts watching her play coach I mean obviously the dominant speaks for itself 20 games in a row with double-doubles now to start the season. Break Sylvia Fowles' record. Um, she is someone. But but it goes just beyond the domination on the court, right? She's had all kind of great quotes about how this team and you and LSU has helped her kind of rediscover her joy in basketball. And on the NIL front, she's talking about how here in the city she feels like women and men are being given equal opportunity. It just seems like Angel is really thriving both on and off the court right now? Well, you get to see more than I do because I don't do social media, mm. but I am aware of things that she says just from the coaches letting me know how appreciative she is. And um, I'm glad people hear that. I'm glad um, recruits hear it. I'm glad our alums and our donors hear it. Here's a young lady who's from Maryland, spent her first two years at Maryland. Uh, came down to Baton Rouge and LSU and said, hey, let's let's do something special here. And, uh, boy, is she doing her part. Even, Coach, last night, it felt like, okay, Alabama was going to make it a point of emphasis. Anytime she touched the ball early, they were going to double-team her. And it felt like a game where other players were going to have to make shots, and they did. So, like, even without her scoring, you know, her normal maybe – you know, 20, 25 points, whatever it might have been. She scored 14, but other players stepped up because Alabama's like, okay, we got to stop Angel Reese. And so last night was was kind of enjoyable to see other players, like, take that and take over a game because they had to because that can be another phase of the game. Well, Angel is, is – she takes great joy in telling people, hey, I'm one of the top assist leaders on our team. I know what I'm going to face, and these other guys have got to step up and nail shots. I thought Jasmine Carson's three ball was outstanding last night, but that's something we expect from Jasmine. I told a reporter last night, I've had two three ball shooters in my career that every time they missed, I was disappointed because that's how good they were. It's like I don't expect you to miss a three point shot. I expect you to make every one of them like we do layups. And that tells you how much I think of Jasmine's perimeter shooting. And then, of course, the other score, I, I, I say it a lot, LaDasia Williams quietly does her thing. She had a double-double last night, and she was good defensively helping. Alexis had her uh, usual, you know, hit big shots. And uh, she's, we're just, we were clicking last night. I, I don't in any way believe Alabama. Uh, plays that bad every night. I just think um, we made some decisions defensively by putting Angel Reese on their best player. And Angel's a link, I think. I don't want to say bothered her, but I think it was a factor. Yeah, so uh, for those listening, if you want to go watch this incredible top five, top 20 team 
with maybe the best player in the country, Angel Reese, uh, next Monday is going to be a great time to do so at home against Tennessee. Uh, nice little, uh, nice, nice little kind of extended week here. Uh, but Monday, 6 p.m., we need a whiteout in the PMAC. So go pack out the PMAC, wear white, support this team. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Coach, so the Alabama men's team beat LSU by 40, not to be out. Uh, or, and, then, and then y'all come in with the big 37 point win. Uh, I know many LSU fans are very thankful for, for, for some revenge on those dirty uh, Crimson <laughs> Tide. Thank you, Coach. Well, actually, the men's team for Alabama was to the right of us, literally down the end of the bench, and they were very, very respectful. Okay. Uh, okay. I think. <laughs> chill out. Chill out. <laughs> I know they were, they were know, bad guys, you, and they were heckling, know, and they were just dirty, dirty bad guys. No, no. <laughs> Usually, you know, you get – kind of harassed or whatever and of course the girls who knows they may have been cutting up with them but I just know I looked up when I was walking off the court at halftime and I thought oh those are the men players for for uh, Alabama and they're having a good year and I know the rivalry between Alabama and LSU but I'm a big big fan of Matt here and uh, Matt's going to get it going. Guys, remember what he inherited all yep, no the doubt. players no left. Doubt. The NCAA sanctions and um, I, I just really, you know, you're you just got to be patient. You got to give him time, and he's got to get his players in here, and he's got to recruit, get a couple recruiting classes. But um, yeah, they they were there, ironically, last night. Coach, I want to talk about uh, your next opponent, Tennessee. They are 14 and two in their last 16 games after a little bit of a slow start. Uh, obviously have a, a big game winner the other night. What are you kind of looking forward to? Kind of give us a scouting report maybe on the Lady Volunteers. Well, Tennessee, in my opinion, is a top 25 team. And if people will remember, they were predicted in our league to finish second. We were predicted to finish third. They're very, mm. very talented, very good. They may have the second most talent depth-wise in um, the SEC. Now, they're going to play Connecticut here Thursday before they play us on Monday. Um, so, very good team. Uh, you know, we, we vied for second place in the league last year. We had to go to Knoxville, and we won there without Alexis Mars, which was one of the – just probably one of the more satisfying victories we had as a team last year. And they come here, and uh, you're going to see uh, a lot of depth. You're going to see the three-point shot. You're going to see Rakia Jackson, one of the best in the league. She transferred there this year from Mississippi State. They um, lost their big girl, Keys, early in the season to, uh, I think they said it was blood clot issues, so she's not yeah. playing. But we're going to have a battle, and it's going to be good. And um, if you haven't bought your ticket yet, you better go buy it. I heard that it should be a sellout. There's probably less than two to 3,000 tickets remaining, Ooh. and um, I don't imagine that there will be a ticket to be had come Monday. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is wild, Coach, how y'all have revitalized the crowds in the PMAC for these games. And, uh, again, going to be a whiteout, so wear white if you're of that number. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you about the Arkansas game, right? Um, Because this has been a year of blowouts against Arkansas. You find yourself in a dogfight, and it's interesting because you never quite know how your team's going to respond until you're in uh, one of those fist fights. How, how did you feel? And, and I mean, you know, Angel Reese, of course, stupid stats, 30 points, 19 boards, just dominant. Uh, but but how, how did you feel your team performed in a, in, you know, in a scrap? Well, I thought we showed some leadership. I told the team after the game they were better leaders than I was. I didn't help them very much in that game. And sometimes that's okay. I watched each of them pull for each other. I watched them help each other in timeouts. Alexis Mars had probably the best comment the whole night when we were down three. She said, don't panic. We've got two, three minutes left. Don't panic. Just go out here and do what we do. And she hits the big shot to tie it. Um, That's you hear all the time. Coaches say, Oh, we learned so much in a loss. We learned so much in a victory the other night. Mm -hmm. I would have said the same things at the press conference that I said, even if we had lost, I thought that was a game that was good for us. I thought it helped us grow a a little, a lot. It um, it was just something that uh, we're going to have more games like that, guys. Heck, the one Monday night is probably going to be like that. We got to go to South Carolina. We still have to play 
good teams remaining on the schedule, Georgia, and then you got Ole Miss and Mississippi State. We got to go to A and M. I can't even think of what's remaining, but you're going to have games like that. You're um, you're you're kidding yourself as a fan if you think we're that dominant and that we have arrived. No, we have not. We are in year two of building this program back to where we want it to be. We've um, beaten those that we're supposed to beat, and maybe along the way we have upset some that maybe people didn't think we should beat. But nonetheless, next game up, Tennessee Monday, and let's let's get everybody in that PMAC. And pack out the PMAC Monday, uh, 6 p.m. It's a whiteout. It's going to be great. Uh, let's, let's keep cheering on this top five women's team as they continue to roll. Uh, Coach Mulkey, cannot thank you enough. And um, enjoy this, you know, enjoy like a kind of a little time off. Get ready for Tennessee, and then we'll talk to you uh, next Tuesday after the big game. Well, I will. The team's off today and tomorrow. We will, several of them wanted to go visit Angola and tour the place and wow. get in a free throw shooting contest with some of the inmates there. And I uh, said, if y'all want to go, I'm on, I'm on board. I've already been. That bucket list was checked off earlier when I went to the rodeo, but they're, uh, they want to do that. So Heck those yeah. that want to go, we're going to load up on a bus and go over there and see what's done. License plates made, uh, you know, service dogs trained. Um, we're we're going to go over there and uh, learn a lot about what takes place. Well, uh, we look forward to hearing about it, Coach. And, again, best of luck, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you again. Thanks, guys. Uh, Coach Mulkey, the legend. Let's close out uh, hour number two next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yeah, that was the largest win of LSU ever in Tuscaloosa as well. That near 40-point dub. Uh, go to Riverlands Insurance, uh, riverlandsinsurance.com. I'm constantly telling you about Riverlands Insurance. We're the fastest-growing insurance companies in the entire South. And, um, well, uh, the best part is is that uh, they do all the heavy lifting for you, right? Let's say you're a business owner. Your business has multiple vehicles. Maybe you got, Jake, it's going to be you soon. You have a teen driving soon. Yeah. You're going to have Two to years. insure a child mm-hmm. with a car, which is insane. But you call up Thomas' the cell phone number. Him and Megan are going to get you right. They're going to save you money, get you the best policy. And that number is 225-206-1517. And like we tell you every single day, that is a Baton Rouge area code, but not only in Baton Rouge. Anywhere in the state of Louisiana. So if you're listening to us up in Shreveport, Alexandria, certainly here in Baton Rouge or New Orleans, we are talking to you again, 225-206-1517. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one. You. Auctioner Andrews Institute. Long live you. Have you ever heard the tale of the misunderstood bull? A menacing beast who was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment of grace. Quite grand. Infinity QX80. Experience the Infinity QX80 at your local Infinity retailer. Bayou Ford has $4,000 off MSRP plus $1,000 Ford credit cash on new 22 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. That's $5,000 off plus 0% financing. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Time doesn't stop and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. Louisiana. It's a place defined by culture, by pride, by passion, by people who do more than love this place. 
They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us, and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal. Always. Championship Sunday in the NFL playoffs. Tune in Sunday at 2 p.m. when the Eagles host the 49ers for the NFC Championship. Then the Chiefs host the Bengals at 5.30 for the AFC Championship. Right here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bring it. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. Dance floor pro, I know, you know, I go psycho when my new joint hit. Just can't sit. All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Esther and T Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Shout out, Coach Mulkey. Hey, so uh, we got Nick Underhill kicking off next hour, talking black and gold. What are you going to talk about? We're the same. What is interesting about the New Orleans Saints right now? I don't know. We've talked about it, but maybe not in depth, like which free agent quarterbacks they should maybe consider. Price tag for Dalton, new contract. I don't know. Price tag for Dalton? Yeah. It's important. Is it, though? Does it actually matter? Is anything important if Andy Dalton's your quarterback? And again... Like we said last year, Andy Dalton's probably about as good of a bridge as you can hope for as you look to find a guy to hope for the future. But I do beg the question. I think it does beg the question. It, can anything be important when Andy Dalton is your quarterback? Like, like there's a very obvious ceiling there. Now, now granted, you're going you're gonna to remain above the floor. You're going to remain above the floor for sure, but it does feel like there's a, uh, there's a ceiling. I feel bad. I thought the, Andy Dalton's a great guy. Sure. You can talk pals with Nick too, right? Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, big night for the pals. Uh, most nominated films of the Oscar. Everything, everywhere, all at once, boys. Eleven noms, not to brag. All quiet on the Western Front with. Why would you brag? You didn't nine. make it. Uh, because I'm just showing that I have superior movie taste to both of y'all, as my two favorite movies of the year uh, lead the way in uh, in um, in noms. I'll and say Elvis this. only has a paltry eight. I'll say okay. this, uh, me, okay. me and uh, Oscar noms have never been lined up with what my movie taste was. That's fair. That, that's mostly true. Um, except when they got Return of the King exactly correct, and it won all 11 awards that it was nominated for. Uh, Taco Maverick with six. Huh. Yeah, I'm, I, I've, I have to assume that there's going to be some things, obviously, not Taco with special Maverick effects, but just like with cinematography. cinematography I yes. I ha like have one? to be. Like, yes. The way they filmed that. And how precise they had to be, and if they messed up, they basically had to like start over. Yeah, they go on like <laughs> if someone like threw up, they had to, yeah. and then they'd be like, "Oh, okay, we land, we look at the footage, okay, go film again." Mm -hmm. It's insanity. Uh, you know, only one actor in that movie outside of Tom Cruise didn't throw up uh, the whole time. It's pretty amazing. It was uh, Coyote, not Coyote. Um, what was the girl? Phoenix, the girl right? Phoenix. Yeah, 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 it was Phoenix, right? Uh, also, the song "Not to Not to" from Triple R. Nominated for best score, uh, for for best song. There we go, dude. Uh, what's that? Uh, do we have the full list of uh, best song? Uh, let me look. Let uh. me look. I'm just kind of uh, s flitting around Twitter, uh. seeing what, uh, seeing what pops so up. You got there. ten seconds. No, I mean I'm not getting it. Nine seconds. Hey, Danny, your girl Ana de Armas, up for best actress. For what? Um, Marilyn the Marilyn. I Monroe thought that movie? got hated on. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Oh. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Huh. 
No, um. Damn, that's some joke. What's the woman who always gets nominated for Best Actress? I mean, Meryl Streep. Yes, no Meryl Streep okay. on the Best Actress. List. Okay. Shocking. Sure. <laughs> uh, go to Accusant for Baton Rouge, AccusantBR.com. All your AC heating and electrical needs. Uh, they, look, man, uh, they, they, their core mission statement is service to the highest degree. And um, I would really encourage you, if you don't believe me, because you say, T-Bob, you are paid to do these advertisements. Uh, you are correct. You are correct. But I hope you would know that I still would not lead you astray if I didn't use and believe in the product myself. But, but okay, I get it. Don't trust me. Okay? Pretty greasy-looking individual to begin with. Head over and look at the online reviews. Okay? Because there's thousands of them, and they are all obsessed with Accutemp. So go there today. AccutempBR.com. Get that service to the highest degree. All your AC, heating, electric needs. Ask about the Star Club membership. Go to Accutech. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $8,500 off new 2022 Ram 1500s. New 2022 Ram 1500 trucks on our lot now with $8,500 off MSRP. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. If you need sales or service, the crew at Bayou is going to do right. Bayou. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. Have you ever heard the tale of the misunderstood bull? A menacing beast that was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment of grace. Quite grand, yet quiet and nimble. The Infinity QX80. Experience the Infinity QX80 at your local Infinity retailer. Time doesn't stop, and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. Moon Griffon is back. The voice of Louisiana politics makes his return to Baton Rouge. Catch the Moon Griffon Show weekdays from 9 to 11 a.m. on Talk 107.3. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Good morning, everybody. It is 9 a.m. on Tuesday, January 24th. Your government taco forecast in Baton Rouge. Expect cloudy skies with a high of 68. Coming up on OTBOT, Nick Underhill of New Orleans.Football joins the show up next. You can follow today's show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at OTB underscore ESPN. Or catch us on YouTube 
at the 104.5 ESPN channel and subscribe for daily content. OTBOT live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio starts now. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off the Bench, bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, said I got to come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Weekly New Orleans Saints updates with Nick Underhill on OTB are brought to you by former LSU Tiger and attorney Chris Perrett. Mario, are you and Carly talking about how to melt dead bodies? Yeah, sure. I'm just saying, I see her directly tagging you and says, seriously, sulfuric acid is great. But it'll melt everything. Yes, because I totally wrote that comment about the chloroform. Um, oh, it was Danny. Okay. Danny, if you see a delivery <laughs> to your door, just call the authorities. <laughs> well, but wouldn't that be? I mean, but Mario also lives there, so that's what I'm saying. Kinda... If he sees that he's ordered that and it's showing up and Mario's not there, call <laughs> the authorities. Let them know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, let's go to front lines every Tuesday, 9 a.m. We got our favorite. Nick Underhill, Nick underscore Underhill on Twitter. New Orleans.football is the site. Credit to Nick as he enters the long dark of an offseason where it seemed like maybe there would be huge potential for change. Now, maybe no change, but within that no change, there needs to be some change. Nick, what's going on, man? How are we feeling today? Well, first of all, I just want the FBI to know that I am not an accessory to whatever conversations are going on there. And I, I will I will snitch. I will snitch to, to not go to prison. In, in I don't case, blame you. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I would snitch as well. I'm not trying to go to prison forever. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, dude. Wow. That's why I just hope I don't get caught up in any major crimes. Not a crimes. foxhole guy. Um, I don't think, Jake, I'm pretty sure you would snitch on me as well. Uh, if it was between you going to jail or not. But that's fine. That's fine. You can say you wouldn't. Uh, so, okay, allow me to snitch on myself, Nick, and how I feel about the Saints offseason is I don't really know what to feel because I don't know um, how to get excited for it. Uh, you know, there's no, like, coaching drama to play with. Um, there's no first-round pick to play with. Mario, last segment, mentioned Andy Dalton contract negotiations, which seems like an act, like an active turnoff in a lot of ways. Um, how are you all at New Orleans stuff football? Because this is one of the best things you do, and I know because I'm on the site, so I read them. But tell me, how are you all at New Orleans stuff football finding – the interest here? What are the interesting avenues that St. Sands should be thinking about in this off season? I mean, I think it's still, it's still interesting and it's in its own way. It's not the interest that I want. I mean, I don't think it's any secret to anybody that like, I absolutely hated the offense last year, yeah. everything they did. And, and, you know, personally, if I were making decisions, I would have made different decisions, but I, I, you know, I find it fascinating that, that Dennis Allen is basically betting his head coaching career on, on Pete Carmichael being yeah. able to figure this out and turn it around. And look, I don't think enough of myself to think that like my opinion is the only thing that matters. I'm, I'm going to evaluate how that goes from here and, and, you know, prove me wrong. I, I want to see it. I want to see it change a little bit. And, you know, there were a couple things late in the season that I thought were, were interesting, you know, kind of them figuring out that wildcat package and then making that part of the, the offense was, was one thing. I think there is, some level of creativity there, but it has to be significantly more and they got to be significantly better at that. And, you know, that process of figuring that all out is, is extremely fascinating to me because I, I think that he kind of has to revamp everything he was doing. And that means Pete Carmichael's identity almost as, as an offensive coordinator is, I don't know if it, if it has to change, but it has to, to grow into something. And, you know, I think the thing the team's kind of, betting on a little bit here and look I, I don't think that they just went into this and they said this is the guy I I was hearing things about like calls going out to other people I think they explored their options a yeah. little bit and I think you know that I, I think it's probably not an attractive job I mean you're, you're looking at a, a head coach that if he starts off slow next year if you're an outside observer mm -hmm. you probably think there's a chance of him getting fired and then you're gone too so I mean if you're an, a young up-and-coming guy that has options I don't think you're looking at the Saints offensive coordinator job as is the stepping stone. You're you're looking at one of these other places and if if something doesn't come your way to year and be a little bit more secure in a situation or at least, you know, feel a little more secure in, in a in a situation. So I think they made those calls. I, I don't think they, they had good options. And again, I'm I'm kinda guessing, you know, kinda how this played out, but just strong educated guess would, would tell me that's where it went. And then, 
you know, that then you're in a position where who are you hiring? Is it, you know, you're taking a, a long shot then, kind of like somebody that, that doesn't have a, a glow on them and you're trying to figure it out with, with him or a guy that's kind of, you know, fallen backward a little bit. And I think, you know, DA kind of probably weighed his options and, and felt like his best bet was with the guy he knew and trying to figure it out. So we're going to see if that works. I, to me, that that's extremely, extremely fascinating because everything's kind of on the line and they're doubling down on something that I think a lot of us felt like very clearly didn't work. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how that turns around. Nick, what would you say their biggest need is going to be outside of quarterback? Because we talk about quarterbacks so often because there's obviously uncertainty there and you played, you know, multiple, in fact, you played three quarterbacks um, this year. And so if you don't get a first round pick, if you're still staying there in the second round, where do you think the Saints will look as far as their biggest need? Well, look, I think their biggest need is is a clear offensive identity, which I, I don't think they ever had last year. I don't yeah. think they, they knew what they – I think they set out to be one thing and then they weren't that thing and they didn't have the pieces for it. So I, I think that before they do anything, they need to figure out who they want to be and how they want to play and then kind of go from there. You know, outside of that, I mean, I, I do think that you need a, another running back. I, I don't I don't agree with the idea that, like, Alvin Kamara is washed up or anything, but, like, I don't agree with the idea either that you can just kind of wave a wand and, and get a different offensive scheme and all of a sudden he's averaging five yards a carry again. I, I don't think that's going to that's gonna happen again. I think he'd still be an extremely effective player, but I think you need to get him in a good role, and I think you got to supplement him with someone else. So, you know, positional value being something completely different, you know, I don't think you go running back in the first round or, or spend a ton of money on somebody, but I do think getting another guy in here is is of the, the highest significance. And, I think defensive end is, is a is another need. You got to figure some stuff out there. You got to get some interior rush. So I mean, th- there's a lot of stuff that they kind of gotta they gotta check the boxes on. And you know, that that defensive line isn't going to be cheap to rebuild either. And I think that's kind of maybe where some of your cap issues come into play. And really, the only weakness of, of their ability to, to scout and draft has been at defensive end, and that that's going to haunt them. I mean, they put a lot of resources in defining Cam Jordan's successor of being good at that spot. And yeah. all of a sudden, like, there's there's nothing there, and Cam Jordan's another another year older. And I don't think you can bet on Peyton Turner, and I don't think you can pay Marcus Davenport to be a, a difference maker. So, like, how do you how do you resolve that? Well, you also need a quarterback. So, like, let's say they somehow trade Sean and they end up, you know, Carolina and it's number nine. Like, you're at a kind of a crossroads of, like, all right, you got to go up and get a quarterback. But if you go up and get a quarterback, you aren't going to be able to draft a difference maker at defensive end. So like, what do you do? And, you know, I think that there's a, a probability in, in that scenario where you run it back with Cam Jordan and Carl Granderson, hope for the best from Peyton Turner, but like, I don't think you enter the season feeling great about that combination of players. So they're, they're kind of stuck in a couple of ways here. Um, you know, so I think, will they try to compete and win the, the NFC South? Like there is still like a, a little bit of a, of a, I don't know, a competitive rebuild going on in, in some senses of, trying to put the pieces together in some of these spots, and I don't think they're going to be able to find all of them. Yeah, there's a really good article right now on New Orleans Up Football from Mike Triplett. Ranking Saints' best assets, team knows it has holes, uh, but believes in foundation. Uh, One of the holes would be quarterback there, Nick. Uh, I I know it's a little – I I, I guess what I'm saying is, like, I know it's a little tired because I'm sure you have to answer this 24-7. But what is the latest kind of chatter – around with they're maybe looking to do at the most important position of football. Yeah, I, they're going to try to figure something out. And look, I think they'll probably be aggressive with it too. And, you know, I know, I know that coach is probably going to be pushing to be extremely aggressive with it because you can't really win games without, you know, a guy that at that position that, that can help you win games. So I would expect them to make calls on Derek Carr. I mean, I'd be surprised if, if they haven't already, like, made, made some, you know, at least inroads there to find out what it would cost to, to acquire him, but I, I think they'll go after it with the same, you know, if there, if there are options and there are things that make sense, I think they'll go after it with the same aggression. They went after uh, Deshaun Watson last year because it, it is that important. And I, I know they have this like belief there that you can build the team. And if you build a good enough team, you can just kind of have a quarterback that, that gets you there and you can be competitive and everything. And that, that's kind of what they tried to do last year. And I don't know that they've totally abandoned that idea. But I think that has to be kind of the last resort way to go about it is if, okay, the quarterback isn't there. So now, now what do you do? How do you build it? How do you put all the pieces together and, you know, maybe be a team like, and this isn't going to happen for the saints anytime soon, but 
a team like San Francisco that, that is kind of not as quarterback dependent or Tennessee for a while, they weren't as quarterback dependent. So it, there is a, a thought process there, but I, I think you have to go at it. I think you got to get a difference maker and, you know, I, I, they, they have to figure something else out there. If you're going back with Andy Dalton, like you're kind of setting yourself up for the same type of season, because when it is crunch time and you need someone to make a play, he's not, He's not shown that he can do that. A lot of his stats did come during like garbage time moments in that last year. And, you know, I think that they got to find a way to find someone that could make that play against Cincinnati at the end or, or against Tampa Bay at the end. And that's just not that, that player. So uh, they got to figure something out there. And, and I think it's of the utmost importance. You know, I, the ideal scenario is that you do draft Sean Payton somewhere where you get the compensation and you go up or, even if it's future compensation and now it's plug and play and Andy Dalton's there and you got two first round picks next year, that's a little bit more palatable than, you know, not having anything on the horizon and being with a guy that isn't going to make a difference for you. Nick, how do you evaluate Derek Carr? You know, I, I haven't like done the deep dive on him yeah. yet, but I, I think he's probably someone that, that's in that, you know, the, the top 10 to 16 starters in the NFL. I, I do think that there's probably an element of his career where he wasn't as supported as, as he could have been. I think there's a whole different like Derek Carr reality where if he went to a different team with a strong offensive system and there wasn't constant turnover, that he's probably a much better quarterback. But, I've, you know, there's got to be some scar tissue on his psyche and everything just kind of with how everything's gone and yeah. and just how his, how his career's kind of played out a little bit. There was a point that, like, very early in his career, like, where he was putting up crazy numbers and he looked really, really good. And, and you know, I think a lot of people would have probably bet on him having a, a much stronger career to this point. It just hasn't worked out like that. So, you know, I think he's somebody, look, for me, like it would be hard to pay him the $40 million a year and give up the draft compensation. Like if I'm giving up the draft compensation, like the Raiders probably got to eat like $10 million, uh, of what's left on his contract. I need Derek to lower his salary. And then I probably, you know, maybe give up a second round pick. But, you know, doing it all and paying him, I think that's one of those moves that, that you make and you kind of, you know, swallow and, and do it. But you you're going to regret it probably at some point later down the line. But um, when you don't have a quarterback in, you're in a situation where, you know, people are a little bit des desperate. Those are the kind of things they talk themselves into. So I think the Saints need to be careful of like not doing anything too reckless in that situation. $40 million. Like I just, I just got blown away by the way, yeah, the thought of, of Derek lot. Carr at, at anything sure. over 20 million uh, per oh, year, but no, 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 we'll have that conversation later. Uh, Nick, you mentioned the 49ers there. That's an interesting situation because Trey Lance and what they gave up, like when he becomes healthy, I'm going to assume he's going to be the starter. Now, Jimmy G is going to be a free agent, but like they're going to have Trey Lance and Brock Purdy and the Brock Purdy thing is going to be fascinating. So, I mean, like even a move like that, like if Trey Lance is the guy in San Francisco, like if you have seen enough from a guy like Brock Purdy, like you could take a flyer on someone like that as well, a young quarterback and a very, very controllable contract. All right. First of all, I, like I would probably pay Derek Carr like 30 million. That's just kind of where, okay. where quarterback contracts are going yeah. at this point. Yeah. Like there isn't a 20 million, like the $20 million tier of quarterback is like kind of non-existent sort of, and that's kind of like a, a high end backup maybe uh, that, that has some incentives. So, I mean, like these guys are getting like 50 million a year, but you can't pay Derek Carr for you. Like you got to pay him somewhere in the middle. And I think like 30 million is probably, probably a fair amount of money. Trey Lance. I, like I would, I would make the trade because I'm desperate. If I'm the saints, <laughs> that kind of scares me though. Like if you yeah. can't yeah. succeed in that San Francisco offense, like what's going on? Yeah. Like it feels like they can throw yeah. anybody oh, in there. Purdy. Can, I don't, yeah. I want Purdy. I don't want Trey Lance. <laughs> Sorry. Let me, let me, let me make sure I get that out there. Cause I agree with you. No, you're exactly right. I don't know if I want Purdy either. Like, he kind of managed that game a little bit. He has some moxie, though, and I think there's some upside. But I think if you take him out of that system, like, you probably aren't getting the same thing out of him with the with the Saints. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of scared of all of them. Like, I, I was a Jimmy G guy until I saw Purdy in there, and I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, they're kind of elevating him a little bit. Jimmy's always hurt all the time. Uh, but, look, I think that's the strongest case, like, right there is, is for why you just constantly draft quarterbacks. And people always hate when you have a quarterback. They're like, ah, why are you burning a pick? Why are you doing that? You can't get Brock Purdy unless you're taking shots in the draft. The yeah, guys sure. that you think might have a Good shot. Point. So you get them in, you develop them. Worst case scenario here, they trade them and they get more than the seventh round pick they put into them. And there's there's really nothing to lose in that situation. So, uh, you know, I, if I'm the Saints, I'm taking more shots in the draft. But I don't know, man. That San Francisco, 
you take Shanahan out of the mix, and I, I don't know. I don't know if any of these guys are, are the same. I mean, yeah, Shanahan's a unicorn. So I mean, it's very uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, as good as it gets. Yeah, he's un- unbelievable. Um, and then he's been given weapons that Dude. we keep talking about. Play every position. He took the Falcons so, uh, to the Super Bowl as a coordinator. Okay? <clears throat> yeah, that's I mean, true. That, that's a good that tells point. you, yeah. Um, Nick, yeah. is Sean Payne going to get twenty million a year? The way this is playing out is is weird to me. It's fascinating. I think it's too loud. If I was an owner yeah. of a team and like all these reports every day are coming out, I would be extremely turned off and wonder why this guy's like trying to, you know, it just. I don't know where the stuff's coming from, but it just it just feels like there's like a, a new attempt every day to create like leverage and, and a frenzy and a, like I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it, um, you know. But I understand why he's doing it. You got to keep the market hot. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's fascinating to me. I know that like Albert Breer reported the other day that like the longer it goes on, he thinks so he'll go back to to Fox. I mean, look, he had his second like real interview yesterday, so I don't I don't know why the, the situation will be done at this point. It seems like it's on a normal coaching hire timeline. I guess the, the counter argument there would be is if you want Sean Payton, you know you want Sean Payton, and you kind of wrap things up a little bit. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to read like all the developments that are going on though. Like uh, Duncan had the report yesterday about the second interview possibly coming with the Broncos, and it there's an Arizona interview that supersedes that. And now, like, is there a second interview with the Broncos? Like, it just feels chaotic right now a little bit and it's kind of hard to read the tea leaves there um you know ultimately i think sean wants to coach somewhere i i don't think that the desire in him is to go back to fox i think he wants one of these situations to work out maybe looking at it from a distance and like kind of trying to handicap it a little bit maybe he's trying to get denver over the finish line to you know with the the money or something and you're trying to create like a, a little bit of leverage and pressure on him but there's something going on. I mean, I, I don't think that, like, these leaks happen and the stories happen on accident. Like, all that stuff is calculated and planned. It's yeah. just – it's hard for me to decipher, like, what, what the actual intent is right now with, with some of the stuff that's uh, being reported. The shadow lords are at work. We will see <laughs> where it ends. Nick Underhill, at Nick underscore Underhill. Again, uh, New Orleans on Football is the site right now. You go sign up. You got a lot of great stuff to read. Ranking Saints best assets. Teams knows it as holes, but believes in foundation. Like I said, you got podcasts there. Here are seven things can uh, Saints can do to fix their offense for better or worse. Dennis Allen, Sigurd, Pete Karma. So much good content at New Orleans Up Football. Nick, thank you, man. Yeah, take it easy, guys. Uh, take it easy, brother. All right, when we go, uh, Mario. I heard you um, saying earlier. You know, he is having the time of his life. Why is Sergio Dip trending all over Twitter, Twitter again? Uh, what happened? Today's the anniversary of his sideline report. Oh, okay. Hell yeah, all those dude. years ago. Yeah, what a great. It was in January? Uh, was it a playoff game? I thought it was like a preseason I game. I think so. Maybe it I, wasn't. The... I thought it was a doubleheader the opening week. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was, yeah, maybe that was. <laughs> it good. was being acknowledged on Twitter today yeah. for some reason. Me and um, Danny were sharing a laugh. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing it pop up on the on the Twitter list. I was wondering I, why exactly. I, real quick, because I, we'll move on to something different. But mentioning Brock Purdy there, it, it's probably some of it because you're you're with the unicorn. You're with the best play caller in the NFL, the most creative play caller, the guy that gets you in the right spot. But we talked about it earlier. He he started 48 games in college. Yeah. 48 That's a lot of game. games. He completed 68% of his passes. He threw for over 12,000 yards in his career. Right, He threw for 81 touchdowns to 33 interceptions. And so, like – like, that's why you take a chance in a quarterback. Like, you're like, hey, I have one more pick. This is Mr. Irrelevant. Oh, yeah, that guy started 48 games and played in conference championship games. Uh, let's take a flyer on him. Yeah, and it's not always going to work. I mean, you took a flyer on Ian Book, a guy who won a lot of games, who had better stats in the Brian Kelly era than any other quarterback, which actually that's probably worth talking about. The Brian right. Kelly quarterback era stats are not very good. Um, they're not bad. But I, I think I said this on Scone and T today. I was wrong when I was saying, well, you know, let, let, we're already so long here. Um, do you have any final points on? Because, uh, but, but I agree. Just because Ian Book fails doesn't mean you don't keep taking and, flyers. And book, you keep taking them. Look and how somebody quickly. Will hit. Look how quickly Book got picked up too, though, and like was on a roster. So like, is this more of a Saints developing quarterback situation? Well, I mean, look, I don't think that. Um, no, I just think the Saints with Dalton and Jameis just had a pretty good quarterback situation, right? Like that. That's like Ian Book is good enough to be a backup somewhere else, but I don't know if he's good enough to be the backup or where they'd rather spot when you have Winston and Dalton. Well, you have Taysom, too. That and Taysom, too. yeah, and Taysom, exactly. So, yeah, no, no, I'm not saying that Book's bad, but I don't think Book's going to be, ever be, like, a great starter in this league. No. But that's why you keep taking flyers, though. Um, it just shouldn't stop you just because he doesn't hit or, like, Garrett Griffin or stuff like that. Uh, 
All right, when we get back, let's talk a little bit about Brian Kelly quarterback stuff here on OTB. OTB. OT. Go to Devil, DGBauto.com, DGBauto.com. Donaldsville Glass and Body is your one stop and con shop. Um, they're the best, man. And uh, you like that? Is that like a little journey thing that I just accidentally fell into? Uh, ooh. Since 1977. Non Steve Perry. Non Steve Perry journey. Um, call me T Perry because I'll never stop believing that Devil's the place to take my vehicle, whether it need tires, wheels, brakes, glass, auto, 24 7 towing. Um, they do it all. Donaldsvillegladsandbody.com. Ah, T Perry. Oof. Uh, Donaldsville Glass and Body, DGBauto.com. They are a one stop shop. No matter what you need, you see it on the video we play every single day. I mean, they can do whatever you need. Windshield replacement, you probably assume you can do that anywhere. That's not the case. You can do it there, though, because they have all the latest technology to be able to handle anything you need as far as the new sensors, whatever it is. They got you covered. DGBauto.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Follow us on Twitter at 1045 ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside off the bench anytime. Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045 ESPN. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Louisiana. It's a place defined by culture, by pride, by passion by people who do more than love this place. They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us and LWCC is proud to celebrate because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal, always. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. At Auctioneer, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioneer Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioneer Andrews Institute, long live you. Moscona inviting you to join us for Tuesday's AFR. The Pels and Tigers are both back on the hardwood. We'll preview the action and we'll keep counting you down to the NFC and AFC championship games. It's AFR 3 to 6, 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
OTB OT with Hester and T Bob on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge and 947 ESPN Alexandria. What up, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Hope you're having a great day. I mean that. Like, I, I legitimately hope you woke up today and you're like, man, you know what? I feel pretty good. And then I hope you like, got to work and get a positive interaction with a coworker that maybe boosted your confidence a bit. Um, I hope you got to use the handicap stall and nobody bothered you. Um, I hope you checked your email and nothing annoyed you. That's big. That'd be, that's a big start to any person. Look, I think if you check your email, you're doing more than we're doing. I checked my email and they told me there was king cake here, so it's great. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's kind of exactly what I hope. Or right, does anything make you happier than food? Uh, I mean, it's not rhetorical. I'm just asking. Yeah, I mean, maybe on the same level. I don't know it's happier. I am passionate about food. Same way I'm passionate about sports. Which is completely fine. I'm just, I was curious. Food makes you probably the happiest. So just knowing you... Over the last couple of years. But that is interesting, though, right? Because normally if someone's food is a passion, a la something like The Menu with the Nicholas Holt character, you end up, you know, you're like a like a foodie and you're all about, like, mouthfeel and, like, uh, you know, that's not Mars. <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> Ironically, he's, like, passionate about food, but, like, passionate about trash food. Yes. <laughs> which, which you don't often, which you don't often see. Shout say. out to Miss Deck. She was my second grade teacher, and she gave nicknames to every student in the class. And mine was Garfield, because I was supposedly always hungry. <laughs> 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 what is lasagna, right? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Garfield loves lasagna, oh, man. I can't even uh, hate, dude. I mean, lasagna no. is... I had it last good night. Sheet lasagna yeah. is incredible. Yeah. A good Banger. meat sheet pasta lasagna. The problem is like I um I need somebody to make me an elite ingredient professional chef lasagna, but in the kind of same style as a Stouffer's. You know what I'm saying? There's something about the cheap stacks of the Stouffer's meat uh layers that are the uh, I, I don't know, like Sometimes well, the meat's homemade though. Sometimes I've had what's up? Not the meat's a homemade lasagna. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know that I've ever had a truly great homemade lasagna. I haven't had much homemade lasagna. I, I would love to have a great homemade lasagna. Um, sounds sounds awesome. Uh, do you make a great homemade lasagna? Mm. Yeah, it's not, I mean, I'm not the I am not a chef by any means, but Prove lasagna it. is one. Of I the baked us cookies. Why is Jake not getting crap for never bringing us homemade lasagna? Hey, Bob, that was two years time. ago. Doesn't matter. When was your lasagna? Never. Okay. So it was infinity ago. I've gone my entire life without eating Jake's homemade lasagna. You can't say the same about my cookies. That's fair. Yeah. So bring some in. I'll eat um, some here on air. Well, I think everybody knows that you would do that. Okay, that's just, I mean, whew, that's hurtful. There was a lot of edged there judgment was, and venom no, in that. No, I that's think you, fine. you took that. Whatever. We, we eat sliders all the time on, on here. You, you drink champagne. Like, we, they're food, food. Like, we don't hold back here uh you're I mean, right we've eaten dog food on this set before so then why <laughs> oh, <there it> is. <laughs> so then why um am i going to hold myself back by calling myself out because i want to be honest with the audience and when we were talking when walker howard left and i was like look the bottom line is do you trust brian kelly to replace walker howard with an elite quarterback recruit i still stand by that i still say yes on that when it comes to recruiting, I have no doubt that Brian Kelly is going to continue to succeed and probably only get better as he continues to build momentum. I also said, though, that Brian Kelly has shown the ability to get consistently great, I think maybe even use the word elite, uh, quarterback play. And a further dive into the actual numbers of the quarterbacks, Jake, uh, during the Kelly Denbrock for much of the Notre Dame era, later Kelly, D Tommy Reese, there might have been somebody else as well. Um, but... A dot, but but Brian Kelly like coaches his quarterback, so like he that that is you know the position that he helps to develop. Mm -hmm. um, a further dive into that actually shows that there hasn't been quarterback play that you would call elite. It's never been bad, like it's always been solid, and it's always led to winning football. But you've never had anything, especially viewed through or judged through the lens of modern. Um, football where we expect quarterbacks to throw for like 
30, pushing 40 touchdowns if you want to be considered elite and over, you know, well over 3,000 yards. You got a lot of like, like here, like, okay, so first two years, it, we, okay, first two years is kind of whatever, right? But he had Dane Christ over 15 and 7, Tommy Reese 29 and 14, then 12 and 6 with Everett Golson, then 27 and 13, 29 14. These are all touchdown pick ratios 21 10, uh, 26 9. Shout out to Sean Kaiser. Um, 16, six, 19, seven, 34 to six. This was easily the best year. Senior Ian book in 2019 went off 3000 yards, 34 touchdowns, six picks. And you can look at Desmond Ritter at Cincinnati under Denbrock. And he was, he was good as well, but, um, and he's probably the, maybe even slightly better than book. But I guess the point is, I just want to be painfully clear that if I realize that I'm wrong or something, and then maybe I put bad information out there, I want to call myself out on it so that you know that I'm not just pumping sunshine to like carry the water or just try to sell a message that I don't think is true. And so while I still believe that they've never had disastrous quarterback play, and I really like what they did with Jaden Daniels in year one, in an offseason, Jake, where we're looking for the quarterbacks to, like the biggest step forward we want them to take is by volume statistics and pushing the ball downfield and making this big plays. There's never been, I mean, maybe yards per attempt is a better stat to look at. There's never been one season where they've been over eight yards per attempt. Give me a receiver during that time. Um, oh, probably. Uh, oh, oh. Um, Golden Tate was before. Not Golden Tate. Was he a safety? Who's the pitcher? Samarja? It's way before. Oh. Jeff Samarja. It's kind of my point. Like, two, like, so, like, that correlates with each other. I'm not, I'm not giving an excuse. I mean, that that's, that's subpar quarterback play. It's right, probably average. Uh, you know, their offense probably changed a little bit over time as well. And, and book there at the end yeah. maybe is, is more indicative of what they're trying to do offensively now. But also, being at LSU, just if you stayed just in state, like the receivers that you're going to have, I mean, the two best receivers in the NFL are both LSU guys from the state of Louisiana. You know, so it's, it, that, that's a different portion of it as well. Like For they sure. always played through their tight end and they ran the football. And that was kind of what that offense was. And I think some of that's changed. And so, if like, if we did a deep dive into a lot, like, go look at um, Alabama's quarterbacks before Lane really changed that offense. Yeah, no, You'd definitely. have very similar stats. Yes. They're winning championships. Yes. And so, I, I, I agree with you that those numbers are not great, but I don't think it's necessarily who they are right now. And I want to be clear. I'm not even coming from as much of a point of criticism as I'm saying that I'm kind of just looking for them to do something that they're not technically on record as having mm-hmm. done, right? That's all I mean, um, is that I was giving them credit where maybe they still have to prove it or earn it a bit. I mean, that's not awful quarterback play. It's, it's, I mean, look at all the games you want. It's quarterback play you can definitely win with. I just mean that, like, in an offseason, again, where I want to see Jaden Daniels push the ball downfield more and make some of these big plays, it's just, uh, again, some you know, lack of receivers or not. It's just something that you need mm-hmm. to see a Brian Kelly – offense uh, proved to be able to do and look he said it he said he wants to be more aggressive so so I think he should be able to uh, potentially but it's just 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 want to be honest with the uh, with the audience here um, so they don't feel again like I was uh, putting out bad information or trying to complete some agenda or something uh, yeah we'll see You feel like you got it done? I mean, I don't really have a landing. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that I have any great like way to wrap up the conversation beyond yeah, we'll see. Well, no. Well, <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> but also, now's a great time to tell our listeners about uh, DraftKings. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, is it? To go to DraftKings.com and um, use the promo code Baton Rouge and bet five dollars and win or lose, you get a hundred fifty dollars in free bets with which to play. Uh, I'll tell you, last night, uh, Boston University, plus 18 and a half. These are all live. Um, Virginia Tech, minus two and Jesus. a half. Chicago State, plus four and a half. Western Illinois, minus four and a half. Uh, Maryland Eastern Shore, uh, plus ten and a half. And Oakland, minus six and a half. Did you hit that? Yes. It's every night, dude. Every night. Jake is one of the only people that I know. Maryland Eastern Shore? That, yep. makes, ga- that makes money gambling. And the wildest part is, I normally am a fan of the line, if you make money gambling, you're a professional gambler. Jake is actually one of the rare cases where he's not a professional gambler, but he is actually up. Like, he does I mean, that was the big one. Money doing Last this. night, the small one was, um, well, I'll show you during the break. You're, you're just, you're just, you disgust me. You're 
free money. You know, you're banking on all of these teens. It's unethical. You remember the – um, It's unethical betting on college. On you remember the teams. trip that I went on? Gosh, what was that? Not that long. Oh, we went to the Chargers Chiefs and yeah. went to the amusement park, and we did like yeah. the whole cal- – Yeah, that was paid for. Thanks to DraftKings. I know. I know. I want to be painfully clear, though, y'all. This is not the norm, okay? Do not – Join DraftKings thinking that you are going to pay for your family vacations. Um, you are probably of the 99.9% of human beings that lose money gambling. Ton of fun along the way. Ton of fun along the way. Best way to get interested in games that you don't care about. So much fun to play with your spouse, your friends. Like Nothing more fun than being with the fellas. You all have the same bets, and so you're cheering for these same things throughout the game. But, uh, yeah, Jake's just got, man, a little, little magic. A little magic. Um, hey, look at this. According to 247 Sports, LSU's taking over the number one spot in the Pertle team ranks. Hey, that, that was a couple That's days ago. Relax. Um, it happened just now. When okay. Omar Spates Chill. decided to, to come to LSU, that was uh, what put them over the top. But it doesn't matter if it happened days ago or if it happened just now. That is factual. So you and can recruit. I like told you. I, I, look. Omar. I told you, he is a he is a good football if player. If Omar really ends up being a bully, the amount of wire Omar memes I know, that we can I know. use are unending, oh, dude. Oh, so good. If you haven't seen the wire, oh, like, what Omar's are coming. you doing? Um, uh, uh, yeah, like, I used to really, like, I can't, like, I wish I could have shared that moment, like, when he went to the portal. It was, like, almost like, a, oh, I wish LSU could get that guy. You know, that kind of moment. Like, he's from Philly, played on the West Coast. Is LSU even on his radar? So, very excited about that. And, by the way, like, you did a great job giving Lon his credit, too. Even who? Lon. That's who we saw. That's where you first oh, yeah. saw it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Shout out Lon Phillips Holden. LSU Audio. We love Lon. Big fans here of Lon on uh, OTB. All right. When we get back, let's uh, continue uh, the show. OTB. OT. Let's continue the show. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is. The Extra Mile. On the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. Start your day with news and newsmakers. Start your day with traffic, weather, and local stories that are important to you. Kickstart your day every day. Mornings with Brian Haldane from 6 to 9 a.m. Weekdays on Talk 1073. Understood bull. A menacing beast who was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment of grace. Quite grand, yet quiet and nimble. The Infinity QX80. Experience the Infinity QX80 at your local Infinity retailer. Time doesn't stop, and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. Louisiana, it's a place defined by culture, by pride, by passion, by people who do more than love this place. They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. 
They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us, and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal. Always. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. Me, Jimmy Out and Mike Delicano for the Tuesday edition of Game Time presented by Bet Rivers. We're at Doe's Eat Place on Government Street in the heart of Mid City. Game Time presented by Bet Rivers, 6 to 8 p.m. on 104.5 ESPN Bat Rouge. With Hester and T Bob on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge and 947 ESPN Alexandria. The boys are trying to hate on me for thinking about pushing pine in here. All I'm saying is I got skating in my blood and I want to be out there in the park carving it up. T, you just get so passionate though about Yeah, good. About I'm anything that you're doing. And I, I, I love the passion, but let's stick with something. I, I do. But let's I, master it. You can't know if you're going to want to stick with anything until you do it. And then what you're into, you stick with. I'm still painting miniatures. Like, I'm painting When's the last same, time you played chess? Uh, every day. I play chess every day. That that has stuck with me for two years. That is, there has not been a day when I'm not a get. Now, mm. to your point, uh, go check my Twitter. I was literally tweeting out a badass checkmate I had yesterday. Is that you or Danny? With the I rooks. Don't know. Not, he runs the social not media. With the rooks basically banging the king right behind the queen's back. It was awesome. I don't know what um, any of that means. But, uh, no, but my problem with chess is now I've almost gotten to um, a point where I call it almost uh, masturbatory chess, where it's like I'm not actually doing any of the practice. I'm just playing blitz games, and I've just completely stalled out. In fact, I'm getting worse. Like, my rating is going down. Ooh. Like, I need to recommit to studying and not playing. Um, but, no, chess, chess, see, so sometimes things stick. Chess has never left me since Queen's Gambit. It's been 24-7, like, two years. Um, Were we doing shows together when that came out? I feel like we probably, I don't know. like, I think right so. after I think, it, I think, it, I think or right think it beginning. started re- pretty, pretty close to it. Because we're coming up on the old two-year anniversary. Yeah, maybe it was. days away. Uh, maybe it was, like, right. We, maybe we started the show together right afterwards. Yeah, I think, I think. so. Um, and then, again, painting miniatures. I know eventually it will, it will go by the wayside because mm-hmm. I'm starting to get inklings at times at night now where, like, you know, I want to finish, but I also kind of like, I kind of want to do something. You know, I kind of want to watch TV or something right now. But, um, but bam, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm loving the way these miniatures are coming together. And that, But that's been going on since August. So y'all can hate me all you want, okay, for not sticking with anything. But it's okay. You try a bunch of stuff out. You throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, and you see what you like. You see what sticks. And for how long it sticks, who cares? Enjoy it. Go through the journey, okay? What are so we when gonna I'm do? pulling sick kick flips, no, you're not. don't get mad at me. What are we going to do to celebrate our uh, two-year anniversary in Mobile? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, we should and thought about it. Go get a nice steak or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Let's 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 go get some. Uh, let's go do some LSD. Let's go to Senior that. Bowl practice. No, let's go. I got to work during that. So Matt do you. Stone and Trey Parker <laughs> once uh, we took both LSD to work. and dressed up in dresses and went to the Oscars. I, saw, I remember which that. Which had to be terrifying. How they did not like. I have, like, anxiety attacks, bad trips. I have no idea. That had to be the scariest thing ever. 
Um, but yeah, let's do that. You down? Two years? Uh, no, I'm not down for that. I okay, am down to clown, but not to do that. Um, so yeah, like Retro Bowl. Retro Bowl was great, guys. Well, it was great, but then I, I still, it. I still am on a little bit of Retro, but Retro Goal. Yeah. Oh, Jake's on that. Retro I spent way goal. too much time in my life because look, I, I was in a, a hotel covering four different games in the month of December slash January, and so like a lot of downtime. What do you do? You play Retro Goal. Yeah, the only thing about the getting hooked on an iPhone game like that is you always feel bad coming out the other side. Like when you disappear into Retro Bowl for like an hour and you're like, what the hell have I been doing with my life for the last hour? Um, uh, looks like I was wrong. Um, our our two-year anniversary was uh, January 19th, as my wife lets me. Uh, oh, it already happened. Reminds me. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, congrats, boys. Yeah, sorry about two I years. Well, I mean, five days ago. Mario's not quite hell two yeah. years. I've been here for Cheers. most of that. Yeah, <laughs> Moose Cheers. was here. God, that feels really weird that Moose was the producer of this show. Yeah. I true. don't even remember that. That's true. Uh, we made Moose do a blind taste tester. Oliver Twist last week, he thought he could choose a Miller Lite blind, and he, he barely missed it. I saw that. Come on, yeah. Moose. Huh? Yeah, I don't think you could do it either. I don't think you're appreciative. Yeah, but I'm not a beer like no, connoisseur like, the whatever, way Moose whatever is. Whatever drink you think you get, I don't think you get. I, I think there's. Um, I think we don't appreciate how much looking at the thing prepares your brain to mm-hmm. taste it, and so you're not tasting it absent visualization. Like, think about when you drink, think you're drinking something, and then you get, like, milk. Like, when you were a little kid. It was such a jarring experience. So. Uh, think about, like, when, and I love, I love tea, I love unsweet, sweet tea, whatever it is. But think about, like, when you think you're about to get a soda, and you accidentally grab the wrong cup, and, like, that shock if you tasted tea. That's right? what I'm saying. Yes, all? yes. That's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. I think our eyes do more of the lifting and tasting than we think. All right, let's you ask the bench next. OTB OT. Go to All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. It's not just a website. Go see dealership off of Airline. They're great, but the website is a nice place to start. If you want to look at um, some of the deals, you can schedule your service right there on the site. You can actually buy a vehicle right there on the site. Um, you can rent. You can. There's text box where you can uh, chat with people in any department. You get some of your questions answered. Um, and so look, uh, whether you want a big truck, uh, SUV, a minivan, they have it all at all start to If you're buying, leasing or renting, they are truly the place to go. T Bob tells you all the time. You can customize that minivan right there on the site. If you are leasing, that's what we currently do with the Highlander, right? Family's growing, might have to go to Sequoia, Sienna, but they have options for us. That is the point. And also per day rental prices, looking forward to that Sequoia on the way to Mobile. All Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499 1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. At Oxnard, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Oxnard Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Oxner Andrews Institute, long live you. Understood bull, a menacing beast who was born to float, a force of nature, the embodiment of grace, quite grand, yet quiet and nimble. The Infinity QX80. Experience the Infinity QX80 at your local Infinity retailer. Time doesn't stop 
and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility, moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future, and the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, Intel, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Formal Toyota Toyotaopolis is here to help you ring in the new year with no markups and you'll never pay over MSRP. And we have new inventory arriving daily. So happy new year from our Hey, it's on Join Me Tuesday 1 to 3. We'll have Glenn West talking Tigers. We'll have Sharif Ishak on the Pels. We'll get you ready for LSU and Arkansas up in Fayetteville. Hunt Palmer Show, 1 to 3 weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. <laughs> Hester and T-Bob on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge and 94.7 ESPN Alexandria. Yo, what's happening? Welcome back. Ask the Bench. Brought to you by Cold Curse Light. Busy Heart Seltzer, Blue Moon Light, Sky Citrus Sweet. Bet you I could choose Curse Light. If you were to line them up. Do you think you could, Jake? I actually don't know if I could. I think I could. You think you could? Mm. We should do that. Yeah, we'll do it. We should do that. Uh, Ask the Bench. Uh, are you watching any videos to figure out what tricks you want to do first? Also, are you getting pads? Just doing no protection. Uh, I will be buying pads. I'm not into doing tricks. I just want to cruise, ride ramps, maybe like slide ollies up curbs. I have no aspirations to be doing flip tricks. You have a, like very small guy. You have a corner in your garage of stuff that you've been into that just sits in a uh, pile? Uh, no. No? No. Uh, I, I wish question. that y'all could, um, you know, uh, whatever. Y'all should be more like as the bench, uh, should we have an OTB Rocket League tournament? I'd be down for that, actually. I, that would be a very fun thing to do. Um, ask the bench, uh, of the four, who's the best at chess? Me. Monopoly? I'm not good at Monopoly. I like a whole serve. I don't know if I'm the best. Jake, I feel like you'd be good at Monopoly. No? Yeah, okay, we'll give it to Mario. Dabble. Um, video games. Um, probably this is what we're playing. Me. Probably me. Um, I mean, I smashed any... good Mario Kart, so, you know, there's... Any sports game. Uh, yeah, it's true. I don't know. Yeah, football game, Jake would probably be best. I'd smash your feet for those. There's no that. shot you smash I would feet, smash bro. you yeah. for peeps. I mean, I would be crossing you Smashed. Up. Every FIFA, cross would be a header. FIFA Smashed. tournament, us four yeah. with stakes. I'm, I'm down. down. Oh, I'm completely down. Um, Are the Saints FUBAR if Peyton stays a Fox? No. Who I mean, look, they're not going to be good next FUBAR year. I heard of FUBAR and Jimbo's favorite. They're not going to be good hey, next FUBAR. year. Hey, it's just really FUBAR. You got to memorize this, FUBAR. Has to be in favorite old school video game. I okay, so Super Mario World remains F Zero probably. Ooh, I played F Zero on the SNES Mini not too long ago. I played Link to the Past. Whatever the Super Nintendo Zelda was, um, is truly fantastic, dude. I played it for the first time in my life not too long ago. Unreal Tournament. Oh wow, Danny, nice pull. Cliffy B, married a Louisiana girl. Cliffy B did. Shout out Gears of War. Kingdom Hearts is pretty fun. Kingdom Hearts, it is old school now. The original it? one, yeah. Oof. I was young. Man. Ask the Bench, better game. Last of Us, Red Dead Redemption, or GTA? Oh. The only one that I've played to completion is RDR2, so I'll go with that. Red Dead's really good. G I mean, GTA, depends on which one you're playing, but Red Dead, it still hits. Like, you could pop it in right now. It's yeah, still Red hit. Dead 2, I just go, I could pop it in right now and just go ride around the wilderness and yeah. see what I get into and be blown away. Yeah. GTA. Uh, GTA is really good. GTA Online, the most profitable piece of media that's ever been made by human beings. Uh, the most profitable and best urgent care, uh, Page Plus Urgent Care, PagePlusUC.com. Go there today. You're not feeling good, man. Page Plus got your back. Get in, get better, create that digital profile. They're all throughout the city. Page Plus Urgent Care. Hey, we love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Hump day. OTB. OTB. OT. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. 
That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, Hanny Time, Hunt Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. Louisiana, it's a place defined by culture, by pride, by passion, by people who do more than love this place. They celebrate it, elevate it, champion it. They are the individuals who embody what makes Louisiana great. The companies that make Louisiana a better place to work and live. The nonprofits leading transformational change in our communities. Champions of Louisiana are all around us, and LWCC is proud to celebrate them because we've always been Louisiana loyal, supporting the workers, the innovators, the change agents of this great place we call home. Who are the champions around you? Together, we can share their stories. Together, we can help our home state thrive. Together, we are Louisiana loyal. Always. Have you ever heard the tale of the misunderstood bull? A menacing beast who was born to float. A force of nature. The embodiment of grace. Quite grand yet quiet and nimble. The Infiniti QX80. Experience the Infiniti QX80 at your local Infiniti retailer. Time doesn't stop and the world keeps spinning. Community, culture, and communications, the powerful circle that connects us together. We're creating the next evolution, a network built for every possibility moving faster than ever before, streaming us forward into the future. And the revolution is closer than you think. RTC, ETEL, and Vision are now Rev. New name, same company. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. All right, let's say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Where'd my spotlight go? Super weird, but we can take care of it. Get in and get better at Patient Plus. Moon Griffon is back. The voice of Louisiana politics makes his return to Baton Rouge. Catch the Moon Griffon Show weekdays from 9 to 11 a.m. on Talk 107.3.